Hello, and welcome back to Roll for Your Favorite YouTube streams. Get together to play some lovely tabletop RPGs. Of course, today we are playing Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition Silence of Shadows, our second season of uh, Vampire the Masquerade. Right, we have a few announcements to go over. Uh, we also have a few things to uh, to talk about very briefly, including the fact that Werewolf was announced. Yes, we Finally. know. I'm just saying this right now so that we don't get a million people going, What are you doing, Werewolf? It was announced. We'll probably play it at some point when we actually get a copy and they actually announce a date, but they we know they've announced it. Don't worry. So before, before everyone says that. Uh, right. Today, today's support is Kieran. Kieran, thank you very much for supporting today's episode. Pay them, pay, make it possible to pay the majority of the cat cost. Thank you very much. We've got a good cat ratio on today. Um, I think the cat ratio is what? One? One? Exactly? I technically own three, but only one in the office. Okay, that's a good number then. That brings our ratio up to almost two. It's good. It's good numbers. Uh, right, so... Thank you very much, Kieran. Uh, we have a lot of stuff on the Patreon if you want to go check that out. Uh, there's character sheets and GM notes for the Truth or Dare one shot, which was apparently fun. So I hear. Tracy's like, it was, no, it wasn't fun. It was so much fun. We had lots of spooky was, fun. Yes. <clears throat> the little witch rule system or something, right? Which yeah, which, which, uh, which is witches and spellcraft. Yes. Is it a D6 system? system? I'm sorry, I'm not. It's a D8 it. system. Maggie Ooh. made it up. Cool. It's Maggie's. It was oh, great. neat. I didn't even know that. That's cool. It was fun. We get to make our own spells rather than picking from a spell list. Yeah. And it's great. That's really cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, we should play mage. I'm just saying mage. Yeah, yeah, mage. Same thing. <laughs> um, What else? What else? What else? Uh, we also have the admin monthly recap for September up and the faction turn for Blades in the Dark available now on the Patreon. Uh, so if you want to go check all those fun stuff out, you can do so. Um, and finally, the really, really important one, uh, we announced RollCon last week. Uh, Roll for It Con will be happening in the end of November. Uh, we'll be doing a meetup on the Friday, followed by a eight-hour-long charity stream the next day, and then a, a fun one-shot the next day after that. The Friday meetup, we have an RSVP for, so we can get a vague idea of the numbers, because we will be ordering food. You do not need to buy food, you can come, you need to buy your drinks, but we are going to be having a buffet. Uh, we just need to know a vague number of people, so if you are going to be arriving and coming to that thing, please uh, just be, you know, RSVP. I know you don't need to, in theory, but we kind of need to know numbers, so if you could do that, that'd be great. If you need more details about that, it is on the Patreon. We have a Patreon link, which, uh, there we go. Thank you much, Pav. Uh, in the in the channel right now. If you want to go have a look at that in the chat. If you are currently uh, watching this on YouTube, uh, just go to like our Twitter or go to our Patreon and it'll be linked there. So go check that out. Um, that will that will be fun. Uh, it will be in Chester on the Friday, November the 29th. There will be a meetup at 6 p.m. Uh, UK time uh, until 10 p.m. So if you want to go check all that fun stuff out, uh, it'll be uh, myself, Dart, Bub, Maggie, Josh, uh, Ben, Beb will be there. Uh, have I missed anyone? I feel like I've missed someone. Anyway, it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, so do the things. Peachy won't be there the Friday. Peachy will be there for the Saturday because he's going to be taking part in the Star Games. I'm really, really excited by his character. Uh, right. With that said, there's a lot of shilling to be done, so I'll show really quick and then we'll go into the content warning before we go into what is inevitably going to be a uh, mess. Um, so, if We're you want to put the show... Less of a mess than season one, I'll give you that. <laughs> so, if you want to support this show, you can do so at patreon.com forward slash roll for it, where there's different tiers and rewards. I've mentioned the rewards already. There's a load more rewards and stuff, all the different tiers, including stuff like $1 tier and above. You get access to the Discord, um, which is an amazing place. Uh, there's also MP3s of the shows. $5 tier and above, you get access to after shows where we talk about what just happened in the show. Um, then there's stuff like player tier, GM tier, etc. for behind the scenes information. Then there's like hero tier with NPC names. And of course, uh, further stuff up there, including a once monthly uh, one shot GM by a member of the Roll for It cast. Also, you can go on Twitch. If you go on Twitch, you can subscribe there, gets you access to the Discord as well, and gets you access to the VODs of the shows before they go out on YouTube, because it normally takes some time. You can also subscribe on YouTube if you wish to do so. You'll get a weird thing on YouTube like icons and some emotes and uh, you'll also be able to get access to our discord and if you should do so you can use tips or bits they go into the pot down there they explode physics will happen and we'll all be very very happy 
Uh, and of course, if you wish to do so, you can tell people about the show, spread the word, tell a friend, tell them the tale. Uh, that will be great if you could just spread the word about the show. That's always appreciated. So thank you so much for that. And finally, hi. Welcome to Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition. Vampire the Masquerade is by default a setting where we're all doing horrible, horrible things as characters. Remember that these are characters, not players. Players are playing characters, we are acting them, uh, and so don't take anything out on our, on our players that, you know, our characters are responsible for. Uh, secondly, we are vampires, we're doing horrible, horrible things by default because that's the setting. Uh, although we can play it in different ways, we are trying to play it true to the, the law of the setting, and because of that, we'll be doing terrible, terrible, terrible things. If that is a problem, if that anything you know touches on things that you don't want to you know discuss see or talk about feel free to take a break maybe go make a cup of tea uh mute the stream for a bit or if you need to skip an episode uh, don't harm yourself on our account that said i'll be handing over to mathis so he can harm us on your account you always say that but you're all still alive uh, it's true technically and, and in positions of power no less yeah. it's true. All of this you. is true so if you want me to fuck your lives up, no, we no, on. no, we are so good at fucking our we own are, lives. We are up. grateful. We don't need we are your grateful. help, Mathis. We don't need it. Oh, gracious GM. <laughs> yeah. Please. I'm, I'm just saying. Such a masochist. Hang on, just got to get the caffeine. No, so, got some fucking life. Excuse us while we we all chug life into our system. Yeah, <laughs> right. If, yeah. If, yeah. If, if that was GM <laughs> trust before he's had caffeine, that's when we all die. That's where we're all very, very cautious. Because that's quiet. that's what I'm so tired. I'm like leaned into the mic, and I'm just like minimal effort voice. So it's just all evil. Where we last left off at the end of last episode, we saw ourselves in a park, and as the camera pulled away. The scene was of the Bruja walking into the forest while Zack sat on the bench, letting some time pass to not look thing make things look rather suspicious of the going is on that just happened. It was a successful mission, and Cami got what she needed when she left. But now Zack sits alone. Though initially he believed Ollie to be there, it seems Ollie also slipped away at some point while he was following Zack around the block and never returned. And the only reason we know this is because in the distance, three young women walk toward Zack. They have a small, brief conversation with one another as they stride forward, and the one in the front with a long ponytail, buzzed sides, and one of those shirts, uh, the black shirts that have graphic tees that say, silly things along the lines of you laugh because I'm different I laugh because you're all the same and she stretches forward with her hand she clearly points at Zack on the bench Zack was going to take an action but the moon begins to crawl backward the camera begins to pull away as time itself reverses to the beginning of the night Dakota rouse check for you please as a uh, you awake for this particular evening. <clears throat> okay, you do not gain any hunger as you wake up. That's good because I'm hungry. <laughs> what are you at? <laughs> Three. Okay. This hunting something then that is on the forefront of Dakota's mind. Oh, uh, probably. Though I'm not. I don't. I'm not anywhere near my territory because I think I, I slept in the park. Yes, you uh, you had to meld with the ground as time ran short when you had your conversation with the sheriff. So as we see Dakota claw her way out of the ground as the sun sets behind the city line buildings and the moon rises into the sky the next night, sliding herself out of the earth effortlessly, frictionless, she pops herself up onto the ground, landing on two feet, brushing off her sides with a few granules of dirt clinging to her dreadlocks. As she looks around, and notices a clear, rather nice night. She takes in a deep breath and can smell the mortals about what few there still are. It's early in the night. This is where they're still wandering the streets. But your dogs, your pups, are still at the dock where they tend to stay unless you command them otherwise. Does Dakota care to feed? Does she care to travel to where she knows she's allowed to feed? That's right probably now, the better option. You have two options. You could hunt in Northerly Isle, or you could hunt in the rack. 
Uh, oh God. Northly Isle would be less. My, yeah. Yeah, it's it's Gangrel territory, but uh, more difficult to find humans, but easier to find wildlife, where it is obviously uh, the opposite in the rack. Right. Um, I doubt I'll have any luck in the rack. Like, let's be real. Um, and I wanted to go to the boat anyway, so let's. You know what? It may be a wildlife kind of night. Okay. So Dakota quickly, as she ascertains her surroundings and makes a quick decision as to where to go for the night, leaves the park and hits the streets of Chicago, making her way north from her little park uh, through the Venture territory and uh, directly north and then to Northerly Isle off to the west. The streets are still very, very busy. People are stumbling around, drinking. Others are having conversation and talking. You can hear city life all around you. The smell of it is never something that leaves your nose. And eventually, you head back to the dock. In the distance, we can see your boat rocking gently in the waters. Uh, and you actually can see from here, one of your pups is just walking around the dock, uh, the deck of the ship, while likely the other one, as always, is unconscious and asleep. One of the security guards uh, mills around, and it is not the one you usually see at mm. night. Uh, he is not someone you're particularly even familiar with at all. You're only familiar with one of them. It's the only full-time night one that works the area. When there's a security guard that is not familiar to Dakota, what does she do? Does she stay hidden? Yeah. Dex yeah, she's gonna try check. to, yeah. Yeah, she's gonna stay hidden. Oops. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, that's not how I do that. I go off still, sorry. Remembering things. Yep, Next. new character so, sheet. New, <laughs> I'm still getting it. Okay. Uh, yep. I apologize, chat. I know I'm a tad quiet. I, I try to raise it, but I also don't want to like. Uh, two successes and a beast for you, sir. Two successes and a beast, that's, that's fine. Um, <clears throat> it's easy to slip behind him. They're not really paying much attention. The security guards here at night are here to gather a paycheck and nothing more. Most of the time they sit in their little, what do you call it, like a station? A little tiny building, a security yeah, guard yeah, pops yeah. his butt in. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he's watching TV or listening to the radio or, uh, and completely ignoring the surroundings as Guard house. quietly slip by. Guardhouse, there you are. Um, there we go. There's an area covered in darkness and thick of brush that you quickly find yourself in. And even if you made noise, it'd be unlikely that he would have given too much of a shit, but you are quick and nimble. And you slip by, finding your way to your boat. One of your pups wags his little butt behind him, his tail, as you climb up on top and he walks up to you, licking his chops and just kind of <laughs> pushing himself up against you. Well, as you look past, as you expected, laying in the bed on his back is the other. Yeah, they probably, I imagine like where the actual like top portion of the boat is where you like steer from. Mm -hmm. I've just padded that out with stuff. It's actually all the dog bags and stuff. And so I go up there and I crawl with them. We wallow and, uh, uh, you know, they do the dog thing. thoroughly enjoy your company as, exactly, one of you, as he yeah. recognizes <laughs> your scent before you even get over there. He starts to wake up and you collide into the bags, uh, into the, like you said, you got blankets and pillows, all amalgam of different soft fabrics of varying different colors, none of which really match well with one another. And you tumble around with the dogs for a bit as they kind of play bite you and wrestle with you for as long as Dakota is looking yep. to do this. Um, and then she'll probably say, uh, um, boys. You gotta be quiet. <laughs> She'll joke with a shh. <laughs> and I'll point at like the security guy, you know, uh, and I'll gesture for them to follow me down uh, into the, the lower actual deck where I sleep. And um, yeah. you say, boys, we gotta be quiet. And they immediately snap to attention. The playing ceases. They're always on the ready for your next command. <laughs> they they kind of, and their ears go forward and they kind of lean forward and you point and you're like, the security guard, and one of them immediately lifts a lip just ever so gently, a little <laughs> rumble. <laughs> Yeah, and, she goes like, no, 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 <laughs> And And it, it maintains eye contact, but the lip gently lowers, but it it stands at the ready. The other one just kind of like looks to the guard, then looks to you and has yeah. this kind of dopey look on its face <laughs> and then heads downstairs before you even command it to go down there. Just yeah, moves. Yeah, because it's like, I know I want to eat him too, but we can't always get what we want. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> and she like talks the dogs through it uh, down and goes yep, to the lower downstairs. deck. Yeah, where mm -hmm. her hammock is and uh, 
the light tight hammock and then uh, all of her books and papers and things and stuffs and um, the walls are kind of stacked top to bottom with like soggy old books uh, that she's been going through over the last 10 years and um, that never get returned to a library. Mm, mm -hmm. They definitely don't get returned. No, um, no, they absolutely don't. <laughs> they do not. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, she breaks out a book and she tries to remember all the tattoos she saw on both Rowan and the uh, the Bruja. Mm -hmm. she, like make note of them or try to sketch them out so that she might be able to do some kind of search for them later on. So for a memory check, uh, I would like two separate rolls for each one. They were, um, it's always intelligence plus resolve. Cool. Okay, well, goodness. So tell me who you're rolling first. Okay, and make let's Let me just get roll bless. bless um, I can browse for this, can I? You can always rouse, yes, but you if have you to wanna uh, be roll a hunger, hunger check. <laughs> oh, you know, it okay. always runs the risk of tempting the beast. It's true. I did uh, gain. You're at four hunger. I'm at four. I'm like, I'm like, God, I'm so hungry, that's, but I'm trying to remember. Um, that's incredibly oof. dangerous. Yep, I'm getting really close. The it's sight of blood could incite a frenzy. Uh, and you said it's intelligence resolve. Yeah, and you're gonna get a plus one. Because All right. Oh, and I get a plus right. And then I'm gonna do Rowan's first because that's what's really fresh on my mind. Uh, okay, so I get two, two successes. successes. I'm upset. So I can't find my pen. Oh no. And I can't take notes. Oh about no. Terrible things you all do if I don't have my pen. Hang on. Hang on. We Quick got Dakota, it, go go murder everyone. You won't we remember, got it, boys. All right. <clears throat> Uh, two successes for Rowan on the memory of the tattoos. Right. And can I get the next one? Correct. I'm not going <laughs> to rouse for this you one. You can't rouse for this nope, one. Nope, I'm not going to rouse for this one. I'm just going to just just roll the thing. And one and a beast. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I struggled with the brew <laughs> oh, house. Wow. Oh, <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, God. Beast of hunger. I'm gonna like burst out of the boat. Like, oh no! No, someone starts like with a finger like this. Like, oh no! I need a plaster. What? Well, a bestial failure failure on a memory check. Uh, it's a bestial success uh, on the memory check, but it's uh, <laughs> not a bestial crit, nor is it a bestial fail failure. Um, one success uh, while sitting there. You know, it's you're sitting there and you're just like thinking, and you could rip into the dog. That could be something that happens. However, you didn't bestial fail. So That's true. We're not going to go down that route. Perfect. Um, you just won <laughs> one success uh, for the memory roll of the Bruja tats. And unfortunately for you, uh, beyond what for, for the very, at least the Bruja, as, as we see Dakota surround herself in her own little makeshift library, like you said, books that were taken from the library and never returned over the course of 10 years how many books has she accumulated is there Hun like a, hundreds a, a hundreds like yeah they're just stacked and pushed to the side yeah pushed into um, mounds and corners and up on chairs and whatnot and some are half open and others are uh looks like just like you uh spilled something i imagine on, on too others. that some of them where she got frustrated trying to read and like ripped pages out you know like there's like claw marks down some of them where she got frustrated at points and um so as yeah. Dakota sifts through her own personal libraries, throwing books aside and pages thrown into the air as their, uh, the sound of cardboard and paper is moved about, we see Dakota reach forward with the hand and pull a blank book, a blank covered book, completely black on both sides. And as it's slid out from underneath and she quickly looks for a pen or a writing utensil of some sort, and she, the closest thing to her is an uncapped Bic pen. She grabs it and <laughs> flips open you see before her as she opens uh, this book in her hand she stands in the middle of her library mess sketches in the book she flips through the first few pages and some of them are rough but as time goes or as the pages flip it's representative of time passing and each time the pages and the sketches get more detailed more nuanced while it may look like uh, a very unskilled or amateurish style of art for Dakota, the amount of time, dedication, and practice she has put into these drawings means she's put effort and patience into it, something that Dakota very rarely did when she was younger. A dedication to a craft, something to get better at, a drive to improve. 
and we eventually flip somewhere past the halfway mark of this book as sketches of uh, mostly human figures, I imagine Dakota is through this book. Do we see a particular reoccurring theme of these drawings or is it a lot of randomness throughout? Um, no, it's probably, I mean, she definitely draws almost every face that she can remember of anybody that she kills right out. Um, uh, does she draw them yeah. at their, in serial killer style, does she draw them at the oh. time of their death or does she draw them as she saw them before? Yeah, I would think it, it's as she saw them before. It's complete from memory because it's always after the fact. Some of them are a little serial killery, I guess, in terms of the fact that some of them are probably drawn in blood and sketched mm -hmm. with, like, actually her claws and things like that. They, it looks um, real personal. Uh, the pages sometimes are, like, torn or worn down from where she scratches at them. Um, I imagine it's not friendly. She, like, you know, scribbles and draws with ferocity on each page um, to keep, you know, <laughs> to get it out before it's lost. Yeah. And so with this blank page at hand, the first thing we start to see her scribble with a passion and there is a genuine fury behind uh, her movements, and her drawing, especially here. She bares her teeth in, in uh, such a Dakota style fashion. You can hear her grunt and growl as this figure, this blank page uh, is etched onto what is undoubtedly Rowan, while it may not be the most detailed picture of all, the details are lying specifically in the tattoos. It's almost as though, at least for now, the figure is there to serve a purpose, a place, so she can, from memory, really draw what she saw uh, inked onto his skin. And with two successes, as you draw it about, it's familiar uh, imagery. If there was a concern to have, it would be that that he may, if he is with a group, with the amount of religious imagery tattooed onto him, that the Society of Leopold would be where he sat. And it would make sense, at the very least, with what you dealt with here in Chicago 10 years ago, that was the orphanage. The Society of Leopold had been training children. It was not the government issued. Uh, at least it didn't seem government issued, but that's difficult to know. Uh, but beyond that, nothing sticks out. There doesn't seem to be uh, any hidden meaning that Dakota can remember at the very least, but a closer look, a, a longer inspection other than a few second kerfuffle over the corpse, uh, over the unconscious body of thin blood would be required. And then quickly to the next page and before she forgets the bruja, at least that's what it's supposed to be. The only thing you can sketch is the Anarch symbol uh, the serpent that crawled up its arm, what it was, what it was clamping down on, you don't remember. Does Dakota just stare at these pictures for a while and she's done it? Does she just close the book and hurl it back into the pile? No, she probably, she does, it is part of a meditative process to actually come down a little bit from the mm -hmm. aggression and anger out of the beast. It's like her way of helping to control it and manifest it in some positive way, I guess. Uh, so she uh, does sit and stare at it for a while. Uh, she probably mutters to the, the pups that are there. She probably talks to them a lot because she doesn't really have anybody else. So she, um, she's like, I swear I saw a thing. I saw this thing. And she kind of like shows it to them. They probably have to sit and listen to her like babble for a while until she she calms down. Um, because this one one's sits, a, yeah. One sits and attentively <laughs> listens. The other uh, excitedly listens. His tail oh. will go, or like exciting parts. Your voice ever gets any more intense. He'll even run up to you and maybe even like sit down with his ears back and really <laughs> excited. Um, yeah. This whole meditative process, this attempt to kind of come down from the aggression that's always at the very front her Dakota frothing at the mouth, ready to rip out, just doesn't seem to go away tonight. Mm -hmm. You want to harmonize with the beast, to understand it, to make it, like, as you said, make it a positive experience. But tonight, whatever the reason, it has its own plans. It rattles the cage and desires to be freed, to feed to take what's theirs, the cattle, the useless creatures. Rules are for you, uh, are for fools, not you. But you still have the key to that cage. No matter how badly it pushes, it's still in control. Hours will pass where Dakota spends in this boat. Maybe two, three at most. 
you're not entirely sure what the coterie is up to tonight, but before you can even figure that out, you do have to deal with your hunger if you wish. Yes. But wits plus awareness. Fun times. Oh, right. Oh, two and a beast. With two successes. You can hear the footsteps before they hit your boat, but there are heavy, slow footsteps on the gravel a few feet outside, making their way closer to you. Um, I probably immediately tell the dogs to like, I, I hide my book, uh, cause that's important, yeah. hide it. Um, I probably, oh God. Um, I have no way of seeing out of this. So I make sure that the, the, uh, hole that drops down into this section is locked. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go inside the lock. Um, and then I think I'm going to tell him to stay. And one, uh, just go lies down his tail still gently wagging. And the other one also sits, but he begins a low growl. I'm going to keep trying to kind of keep him quiet. I want to see, I'm not going to move until I know what they're doing. Because they could, this could just be the security guy. Could be security guy, but very unlikely. Smells you like mortal. You rarely hear him. You smell nothing. You wait for a while. The footsteps draw, draw closer. One after the other, the gravel dissipating under his feet before eventually the footsteps stop right outside. And you hear one loud bang as something collides at the side of your boat. Uh, d is it, uh, how big of a bang are we talking it's a like a pretty an, heavy bang? Uh, like not but, an explosion, but like a, a forceful. Yes. A force, okay. a force myth with this collided with the side of your vehicle. Oh, um, okay. I have a hatch that drops out of the bottom of the boat. You um, will sink. It, I will sink. Can I not hang on to the side of the boat? Like climb it. You could, it would, it would require a roll. Okay, great. Uh, that's probably what I'm gonna do. Okay, it would be a dexterity plus athletics check. Oh, that is promising. I would hope so for <laughs> that is that is promising. Um, okay. Um, and I was gonna say, do I have? I don't think uh, it's only grapple that I gain any kind of. I think. Yeah, you got a specialty in grapple. Yeah, I've got a specialty in grapple, but I don't think I have anything else you know, that will play into this. This is not okay. a grapple roll, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, here we go. Uh, two successes, that seems to be my... So we see Dakota uh, quickly finger the latch as it comes unlocked and quickly open, uh, slide open the door. She li uh, lifts her legs forward first and places one hand on the latch as she slides into the water and closes it underneath her laying one hand at the side of the boat. There's a small grip there that she's used before, a little loose piece of metal that she's <laughs> able to push out and get her fingers under before she hooks herself and swings herself to the side of the boat. On the surface of the water, when looking down, the rippling water helps dif uh, diffuse the image. There's not a lot of light coming down anyway, so if anyone was to even look, they'd see Dakota under the water, but it would be just a slight little <laughs> kind of red, red-ish, uh, colorful of her of her dreads underneath but it'd be blurred and murky beyond and we're gonna see dakota kind of come up and peek and there is someone standing at the very tip of your boat they're standing with their arms crossed a stoic look and a familiar face oh, okay as long as i know who they are let me guess it's a sheriff correct yeah um if that's the case i'll climb up uh and swing onto the boat uh unceremoniously up, soaked in water completely. He watches uh, as you as you breach the surface and watches you climb to the top. He gives you a concerned look, but doesn't say a word. You could, um, you could warn a kindred. I knocked. <laughs> I also hope you didn't also sink my haven. Can I... <clears throat> You look concerned. You're coming with me. Okay. And you uh, brought of course. concern of Oliver's boy. So you will come with me when we check on him. Yes, of course. I, yes. Uh, should I leave the 
pups. Yes. Okay. The only dog we'll need is you. Of course. Um, now? Yes. I, like, shake off all the water, like, dread sling, um, trying to get all the water off of my, you know, clothing. Um, and I'm, I nod in very much agreeance and kind of excitement. I don't ever get to do things with the sheriff. Um, <laughs> there's a little a pep in my step as my tail wags alongside him. <laughs> he walks uh, silently out, out of the docks with you and Toe just behind. He'll make his way uh, past the clearly unconscious security guard as you make your way past it himself. He sits in the chair, uh, slouched completely and the radio and TV is playing. The sheriff does not acknowledge him at all and walks past. Does Dakota say anything? I imagine not. No, 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 I follow <laughs> in complete silence. You were eventually led uh, a couple blocks away, good distance from where anybody, uh, any buildings are in the Northerly Isles. And while the Northerly Isles are rather sparse in buildings, there are still places where people live. It's through the woods in a little wooded uh, park area, hidden uh, behind a couple of bushes and trees. There is a motorcycle that he puts himself on. He scooches forward, just enough to give you space behind him. Cool. Was number eight. Dakota, well, yeah, she slings on, no problem. She's, this Dakota is very exciting. <laughs> slings her right leg over the motorcycle. Has she ever ridden on a motorcycle before over these 10 I years? I was trying to think about that. I. Not in at least the last 10 years, not since she's been turned into a kindred. Okay. So this has been, if at all, a long time uh, since you've done this. If you even seem confused as to what to do, he will very strictly and simply instruct you where to place your arms and your legs. He does not give you a helmet. He does not wear a helmet. Right. Your kindred. Right. The motorcycle roars to life. The tires spin and dirt kicks up before it goes off to the off the park and onto a road, and through the nights you will drive for not too long, about an hour, hour and fifteen minutes, outside the city, into the suburbs, and out into Little Village. Little Village, as you understand it, is, uh, or should I say, East Village specifically, not Little Village. <coughs> That's yes. There it is. I knew it was coming. Yes, feel uh, better. East Village is a royal, the royal forest. The only one allowed to feed out here is the prince herself. It's a safe place to keep uh, Rowan and has been. And while the summer is coming to an end, he is still home. He goes to the, uh, a local college, but he does live in dorms there. He's 20, 20 now, correct? So he's in this final year yes. of college, I believe. Uh, even if he was 21, he could still be towards the, uh, heading into his final year of college. Uh, and the whole ride is quiet. Houses pass by in silence. And our loud motorcycle ripping down the streets is certainly gonna wake up most of them, but he doesn't seem to care. Straight down the roads, turns, until eventually in the thick of East Village, he stops. A small house. He drives up the, walks up the driveway with his motorcycle as the both of you hop off. The, dr the garage, rather, opens at the end of the driveway, and he walks the bike into it. There are three other motorcycles in here of varying different types, different models, and from different years. And he lines this last motorcycle up at the end of the three before kicking out the kickstand and leaning it. He walks over, reaches up, and closes the garage. He nods forward three blocks. And then you walk. There is nobody walking these streets. This is a family area. Most are asleep. It's now around 11, 11.30 at night. Three blocks pass quickly, and you're led to a house, two-story, two a nice multiple family, and in the top, the rightmost window, a light is on. And on the first floor, somewhere in the back, there's a light as well. You can see it illuminating the side of their backyard. He kind of gestures. He's visiting with his family. Check. Uh, without saying anything, I, I guess I sneak up to a window? Sure, dexterity plus stealth. Uh, so many things could go wrong here. 
Yep. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. The question isn't will it go wrong, it's which one of them will go wrong. Also correct. Okay, that's three successes that's and finally no. Like... Uh, yeah. Quietly, Dakota scampers across the street and stays out of sight. There's a street light that she has to pass by, but it's very quick. She's fast. Celerity does have its perks after all. It's not that you're using any of your powers of celerity, but an inherent speediness is now at your call when you need it. And you can blast across the street in a mere second, a blur, before you're dipped back under the, uh, past the street lights into the brush by the building itself. The front yard has a little porch did she climb up the porch or is she more looking to go to the side? I would Where go to the side of the house. I imagine there's a uh, like sh uh, shadow or at least like darkness mm -hmm. between the houses yep. on these rows. So. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. She climbs into the side and just starts peeking through windows. The first you look through is typical, the kind of living area at the front door. There's no TV on, so if anybody's in the house, they're not watching anything and not spending any time together. As you make your way from window to window on the first floor and make your way to the back where the first light of the first floor is on, you can see it's the kitchen light that is on. And the refrigerator is open with somebody bent over looking for something in the refrigerator. And as they pull something out and they stand, uh, it's a woman, middle-aged, very uh, shoulder length, gray hair tied up in a ponytail. And she's wearing a nightgown. She turns with something in her hand and it, ah, it looks like it's just a juice. And she pops the bottle to this not, sl we'll call it slapple. <laughs> and she starts to Best take kind. a big, Yeah, <laughs> she starts to take a big swig of it as she uh, begins to drink. Okay. I don't, but I don't see Rowan. No, but there is a second floor. Oh, great. Wonderful. I guess I'm going to just climb my way right up to the next floor. Um, okay, okay. So you're going to climb on the side of the building. There's no... You could just wait. You don't have to hurry, hurry, hurry. You could just literally wait. I guess that's true. I guess you could wait it out until they see me because I'm currently pretty hidden, right? Wait until you get a beast, mm -hmm. you'll fail and then drain him. <laughs> that's the fear. The hunger is like, I'm like, I'm so hungry right now. Um, I'm trying to keep myself together. Uh, yeah, I'll wait it out then. I'll just kind of peer around, maybe even make a, a, a full circle around the house, looking in all so the windows So you case the, the entire floor. building on the first yeah. floor and look through and the first floor. The other room that you can, the other two rooms that have windows on the other side as you walk is a study area. It has a desk and a few bookcases, uh, a filing cabinet off in the corner. Maybe the husband or the other wife does like some home business here. You're not entirely sure, but it looks like that could be the case. And the other one, of course, is the bathroom. Nobody is in the bathroom either. But you'll wait for a little while, cautiously seeing if anybody moves about, making your way back to the kitchen as whoever this woman is, likely the mother who's watched over him and the wife of the man who lives here, puts the juice back. And as she's putting it back, another figure walks down the stairs from the kitchen. There's a hallway on the left, and then on the right-hand side going up is the stairs that go up to mm -hmm. the second floor, goes up and then right. And down another figure walks, a f male figure, and a young one at that. Clean-shaven, tidy hair. He's well-built. He's wearing a clean t-shirt and some pajama pants with some slippers. He laughs with the woman uh, and gives her a kiss on the cheek as he reaches into the refrigerator as well. It is clearly Rowan. They both, can I smell them? They both smell mortal. Yep, Just they both smell sick. mortal. Okay. I like, I watch the interaction. I want to take like extreme note of him. Um, obviously not the same person that I saw. No tattoos, he's not bald. But, but they look like the same person. Slight differences, but uh, you could chalk that up to just uh, different, like different diet, different build. Sure, sure. Just life, the way but, life but, wears on but the person. Yeah. Exactly. Correct. The, the, the Roan you ran into certainly felt like he was more weary of the uh, world weary on his face. Looks like he's seen more. Could pass as a little older. And I'm like, I probably get away from the window and I like contemplate all of this for a second. Like, uh, and probably with my tail tucked, I walked all, I go all the way back down the street to meet the sheriff um, after seeing this, this. Mm -hmm. He's still standing there, his arms crossed. He watches you as you approach slowly. 
Is he there? Yes. I he, uh... Up. Nope, she, as the moment he talks, she stops talking. Oh, he wasn't going to say anything. I was narrating what he was doing. So oh, okay. Keep talking. Yeah, I, I just say, I swear, the person I saw tonight is his twin. Identical, just, they're different. It's like two, two versions of the same thing. I swear it. Is that he hiding is... the fact that he has two boys? I really think about this for a second, because that was not something I don't think that had crossed Dakota's mind. I, I don't know. I don't know. Then figure it out, because you're wasting my time. And then he turns very quickly on that and walks. He does not invite you to join. He says nothing. And now I'm stranded out here. And now you're stranded out here. A few moments, a few minutes later, as you're either walking away or walking in the direction he went, you hear the motorcycle rev up and you hear it grow distant. Till you are left with an eerie silence. I'd like How to does eat Dakota something. <laughs> I was about to say, she's just yes. like pissed. She like walks back and she has she's to contemplate mad. this. Yeah. She's a little does, grumpy does, and she's hungry. Does is it uh would would this anger Dakota? Is this something that would make her upset? What just happened? Yes, it would make her so mad. Cool Fury Frenzy check. Please. I would make her so angry that he drove off and left her. Are you joking? She has abandonment issues. Um, here we go. Break into the house, train rowing. Oh bless me. Just give me a roll. Oh. Frenzy restrained. Wow. Can I punch Ooh. the concrete? I imagine I'm just like. Oh, of course. Ah! Yeah. Yep, <laughs> Nail the concrete one good time when he drives off. <laughs> and you do, and the concrete cracks, and some parts of it shatter as bits and dust kicks up as you lift your fist and realize you've left a hole for the prince to have to pay for through her own government officials to fix it later date. Fuck. <laughs> I get mad at myself again. Some <laughs> feedback loop from hell as I walk down <laughs> the street. Fuck. How hungry is so, Dakota? So is hungry. she going to be able to leave the East Village without feeding? Is she able to leave? Am I allowed to feed on animals here? How does Dakota interpret the rules? All what is Dakota what knows. is the rule by, yeah, what is the All rule? Dakota knows is the royal forest is restricted for the prince to feed and the prince alone. Oh, then I can't feed here. <laughs> I can't even eat squirrels. Okay. <laughs> Dakota walks back, tail tucked, pissed as shit so angry she probably punches things she probably rips signs down Punch along the way yep I yell at a squirrel like i will fucking eat you the whole way there until i cross into uh um, until... yeah yeah <laughs> until i find somewhere i can feed you do this for some time mailbox over this way it gets knocked over as letters go <laughs> scattered a stop sign gets spun on its side each one a little property damage each one a little more destruction that has to be repaired each one making you more mad and wanting to break more things <laughs> until at some point as you're walking down the sidewalk a door to one of the buildings on your right hand side a small one family if there's any one any more than one person living here there it'd be rather tight an old elderly man, maybe in his 60s, steps out in a tank top and loose shorts, and he shouts in the middle of the night, Shut the fuck up! You shut the fuck up! I yell back at him, like, I'm in the middle of something. He, uh, he goes, Fine! The cops will shut you the fuck up! And he shuts the door and heads inside. A light goes on in the living room. Fury frenzy check, please. <laughs> Damn it! I just want to get home. Oh yes! Oh my god! What the hell is Dakota on today? I'd like to go pee on his front porch. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. She is angry, and she kind of like. I have to really. I, well, I have to work really, really. really also, hard. you pee blood, so. Right, that'd be super messed up. I'm yeah. not there yet. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> oh man, yeah. You have no, not I, lost control of yourself. Oh, I just want to get home so I can feed on something. I need to eat something. So he went inside clearly to call the police. Do you just go? No, yeah, I gotta get out of here. I pull my hood up tighter, try to hide the dread. Some I'm now wanted. They're gonna be looking for me in this area. 
they are going to be looking for you in this area. And you're in a nice part of town that is directly under Prince's control. The cops don't take long to show up to any call on the scene. Not three minutes later, you can hear sirens coming down the road. You'll dip over fences if you want to, and you dex plus stealth checks as you quickly try to stay out of view and get out of the police's way as you desperately get out of East Village. This needs badass music. Okay, I got a four success in a beast. <laughs> we see Dakota flip her hood up and she breaks out into a sprint as this man calls for police. Down an alley, down a street, uh, quick turns here and there, but you can still see the red and blue glow of flashing lights heading this way and distant sirens growing closer and closer. To stay out of the way, you quickly toss yourself over a fence into someone's backyard. You're in a garden, there are tomato plants and such quickly growing around you, and it's dark, and your uh, dark cloak and your kind of multicolored hair blends in rather nicely with the bright reds and greens and the, the brown dirt and green grass near the area. You stay low as you can see one, two, just two police cars ripped by the road that you're currently hiding in. They don't stop, there's no spotlights, and with that, Dakota gets up and breaks back out into a sprint. She dash dashes down the road and uh, as fast as she can, looks to see the highway. That's a good way to mark her where the end of this mm -hmm. particular territory lies. And over in the distance, not more than six or seven blocks from where you are, you can see the overpass above. <sighs> Continuing to sprint and running, you can hear more sirens as the police car is potentially looking to search around. You're not sure why they'd be so adamant to search at this point of the night, but you could probably take a good guess. I need one more delf, uh, delf. dex plus stealth. I need a delf check. Sh ship it. I, I sh check. I'd yeah. ship that. I'd ship that hard. Okay. Uh, it's like every time I ask for a perception check, and it's a nice minus. job. Five. Okay. <sighs> Critical hit. Oh. You're maybe two blocks from the highway, and one of the police sirens is behind you. It's at your back. You can hear it growing closer. It's almost as though its hands are on you, so you get behind one of the family houses. There's no backyard to hide here. In fact, it's so close to the highway, there's not much uh, property beyond the house and a little bit of yard behind uh, between each, but it looks like the bathroom window is open. We see Dakota quickly kind of push her hands onto the windowsill and throw herself, tumble in without thinking and hoping there's nobody in the bathroom. Lucky for her, the door is shut and the lights are off and there's no one here. It's very quiet. You hear the sirens for a while as she waits, her back pressed up against the wall, the window is still open, and eventually you can hear them scream by. They grow distant again, and eventually they're silent, quietly climbing back out the window and back over the fence. The border is there. Before <sighs> long, you find yourself back in downtown Chicago. What's a girl gotta do to get something to fucking eat around here? Ugh. The closest place for you to feed is the rack now. Great. I probably waltz in with a scowl upon my face. Uh, go ahead. What your feeding type is? Uh, strength plus brawl, right? Uh. Alley cat. Uh, yeah, alley cat. Yep. <laughs> uh. Please make me an alley cat roll. Wow. Two successes. On a night this early, before it's reached midnight, as you reach to the rack, the rack is thriving. There are people everywhere. The sidewalks are shoulder to shoulder. In the alleys, your typical view of people vomiting and people fucking. You're not sure. Sometimes both in the same alley. Sometimes only a foot from one another. So it's easy to find somebody who's drunk and being kind of a dick to another woman trying desperately to hit on them and doesn't know when to take no for an answer that Dakota bumps into mm -hmm. and stumbles to a quiet alley, either distracting him, promising him a good time, or just taking him by force and just letting the other woman go. And you are able to feed off of him. Okay. You drink. Two points. Three is dangerous. You could do it, but two is your typical safe. Okay, we'll start with two then. Okay. You take him down to two. You lick the wounds shut as his body goes quiet. And you can taste the alcohol in his thin blood as you imbibe it to yourself. Doesn't get you drunk, but you certainly have a buzz. I probably this let is why out feeding unnecessary... from the rack is annoying. <laughs> is annoying, yeah. I probably let out an unnecessary sigh uh, since I don't actually breathe. Um, I probably consider kicking him one good time after he passes out, but I said, I'm like, fuck it, he's not worth it. And I'm gonna stroll back 
home, I think. Because it's been an exciting night, and I just wanted to stay home. And then the sheriff came and knocking and abandoned me, and it's taken me all night to go from one side <laughs> of the city to the other. It has taken you. <laughs> Trying really hard not to destroy everything in my path. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you still did destroy a lot of things. I know. <laughs> uh, it's fine. I wear, and that I wear brings gloves us for a reason. <laughs> to the right around the time, just after everything in the park happened, and we find ourselves flying out of downtown back to where Zach comfortably sits mm -hmm. on a bench. Zach, actually, at the end of last episode, asked to, you know, said something quietly to Ollie behind his shoulder. That's where we pick up. She points clearly, looking at Zach. Uh, Zach said something, was it just like Ollie, you see that or something along those lines, but whatever it was that Zach said, there is no response. What do you do? Do they, I don't know if I can at this distance, but do they seem to have beasts? Do I, can I actively roll for that? They're too far away right now. Okay. That's why you've got time to react. If they're um, even being hostile, you're not sure. Yeah, can I try and analyze the fact you can, like, are they, mm -hmm. are they coming fast at me? Or wits, do they look like they're quick Wits insight. Fighting. Um, wits insight check, please. Insight. <clears throat> please don't fuck me, girl. The, they hostile might not necessarily be the right turn, but they certainly don't look friendly. Okay. Um, what's the terrain like? Am I just completely open in so, the park, or is there bushes yeah, and stuff so nearby? So you've got the bench that you're on is right up against where there is a forest in the back. A little bit of forest is kind of a it's not really forces it's a thicket of trees before it breaks into road in front of you is a nice clear park area there are trees that line the sidewalks um and they're coming from the other side of the open open area you've got like uh maybe like 100 150 feet of open area in front of you i'm gonna just do a quick roll for my own um interest well yeah sure because I'm curious, and I want to know if Zach's curiosity gets the better of him. It does. Okay. Okay. All right. He's going to sit there. Okay. The girl's approach. He's going to be very non-threatening. How does he look? Do you just, like, got one leg over the other? One leg over the crossed. other, so it's like he's going to be slower to get up, and he moves his hands to the side on the bench, so they're obviously, like, out to the side. Like, he's being very non-threatening right now. Uh, he's not wearing the waistcoat and stuff because he came down here after chasing the kids, so he'll be wearing, like, a hoodie um, okay. from his bag, and he's got a satchel over his shoulder. It doesn't take very long. They don't burst into a sprint, and none of them seem to pull pistols from their hips. But as they grow closer, you can see they are armed. Is that stressful or bothering? Not necessarily in Little Village, and not in this part of town. Everybody seems to be strapped out here. Eventually, they approach. Like I said, the woman up front has shaved sides and a really long ponytail. She's got a black t-shirt and really short shorts. The other two are dressed similarly in a thick kind of punkish style. The other two have really short hair, however. One has a short mohawk, which just buzzed barely. You can only barely see uh, the mohawk there. And the other one just has short hair and a tiny, tiny uh, knot in the back. The one up front who is clearly, at the very least, leading the walk. When they approach, stop. She looks you up and down. Where's the kid? The one who is in this park. You know who I'm talking about. The Ventru took him. Well, maybe it's my ignorance. Which one of those again? ones who like being in charge that's fancy all of them suits? fancy suit ones yeah great and which one are you then not the fancy suit ones like gesture vaguely at the hoodie yeah but y'all work together usually ow considering what they've done to me I'd rather you didn't loop me with them but that's fair I'm new around here 
Did you say I'm new around here? I am new around here. Oh, you're talking about Little Village. Oh, yeah, yeah. If, if you want me to make a deception for it, I'm cool with that. But I specifically yeah, didn't you can mean... go ahead and make me... Oh, okay, that's that's fine. Then that's fine. She just she just uh, uh, she shakes her head. I don't really care. What'd you do with him? I don't know. Bundled him into a car and they took him off. Who bundled him into a car? You said the the Ventru. Where would they One take of them? him? Uh, I don't actually know, but presumably wherever the Ventru Council are. You know they're gonna kill him, right? They're gonna kill a kid. Yep. You don't seem too bothered by that. Can I have a look around, see if anyone else is nearby? Just a quick check around. Yep, it's a wits awareness. One. Uh, beyond the four of you here, you see nobody. You okay. know the shop across the street. There's a there's somebody at the cash register because he came out and freaking shouted at the kids when they were here. But that he's inside. He's not outside. And now they're close enough. The three in front of me, all beasts. You can sense something. Yeah. Okay. Can I do an active roll for that then? Yeah. Please do. Um. um... Because the sense the beast actually have a role tie, uh, accompanied with it, I don't. Think it's so, it's right? like the. It's like um, danger. Is it like a danger sense? Well, you can. It, it passively happens all the time unless someone is suppressing yeah. the beast. If they're like trying to suppress it or hide it, you can make an active role, which is resolve Give me an plus discipline. Role. Yep. Give me resolve discipline. I can't remember what the oppose is. Three. There is a. You sense something in them. You're. It's there. It's not like yours. There's. There's. It's 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 like a hint of one, uh, an infantile one almost, but you can sense it. Okay. Yeah, I can remember this. Um. Okay. They asked me, uh, "What was it that um, I'm okay with that?" Yeah. I haven't lost my humanity that much. I'm not okay with it, but there's only so much I can do. And what can you do? Or do you, is it too late? Are you telling me there's nothing I can do about it? For that one? Yeah. Unless you want to die as well and make it more thin buds that die. That term. Why? Why call us that? You seem so willing to share some information. Maybe you can get a little more. What would you prefer to be called? By my name. I don't but know it. It doesn't seem to matter. No. You What's don't your have name? the kid. No. She shakes her head. You don't have the kid. Our job's done. In which case, then the next time this happens and I don't have anyone to speak to or any way to actually get hold of someone who could help, it'll happen again. We'll deal with that when it happens then. You're trying to tell me that one of you feels sympathy for us. Because that would be a first. <sighs> the Camarilla refers to you as Thin Bloods because you've got different properties to everyone else in one of the clans. Each clan has different properties to each other and they all have infighting and bickering. And some of us have different properties to all of you. And nobody gives a shit about everyone else who's different to them. I feel that. I understand where you're coming from. I don't have the same issues as you. But don't believe I don't have any empathy for where you are. And I couldn't you help tell those kids. That doesn't mean I didn't want to. We well, can tell the camera to go fuck itself. I ain't part of your little club and I don't plan on being part of it. <sighs> That's probably the best. The camera doesn't like anything different. So I'm told. 
And even us who have to walk a fine line down the middle constantly roll on a knife edge. Now apparently there's no one else around here. Camarilla or not, it's you and me. Do you want to talk about something? If you want to go, then go. But I'd rather be able to contact you in future should something happen. She uh, she just kind of shakes her head, looking to the other two. The only thing I came here to talk about was the boy. He ain't here, so I'm out. And what about the next boy? And the one after that? And the one after that? I will that. fail the next ones. You will always fail some. Take the ones you can win. Listen, pretty boy, I ain't one to trust people. Especially your kind. You're coming here telling me, out of nowhere, out of the blue, where the boy is supposed to be who's missing. You watched it happen, and now you're sitting on the bench, and you're going to tell me you're here. Oh, I'm on your side. I feel for you, my thin blood. I'm not going to buy that shit. Then you're fucking smart. That's why I'm in charge. Good for you, but I'm not telling you to trust me, because if you did, you'd be dumb, and you wouldn't be of any use to anyone. You wouldn't be so why would yourself? I give you my name? Then give me something. It doesn't have to be a name, just a way to contact you. He, she gestures. This park. If you ever need me, you can come here looking for me. Maybe I'll be here. Maybe I won't. Fair enough. But this is a city of a million people. There's only three of you. Maybe there's more of you that aren't here. Fine. But you're never going to be able to cover all the ground. And there were more thin bloods that died this night that you didn't even begin to save because they just weren't in this park. If you want to keep talking about small fish, feel free. Zach, uh, wits awareness. Sarah. Eventually, she takes your words, whether she registers them or not, you're unsure. And uh, she eventually just turns, looks to the other two girls, and uh, begins to walk away. I'm just going to say, as they turn, I'll say, thank you for trying. One of them, not the one that you were talking to, but one of the other two as they walk away, just slips you the back of her hand with their middle finger up. Eventually they're gone. What does Zach do afterward? Um, I'll wait a little bit make a point of if they do want to talk then he's gonna linger around like he's definitely gonna make the point that he's willing to talk uh, he doesn't expect them to come back but he doesn't want to be like i'm gonna leave immediately afterwards that's it um how long does he stay 20 minutes at least 20 okay and yeah. what were you gonna ask him i apologize uh and do i have feeding rights in anarch territory because it's dubious uh d no but um in our territory it's up to you if you want like do you give a shit as part of the camarilla uh as part of the camarilla no but as someone who just talks to all sides generally he's not gonna piss anyone off unduly i mean you could poach poaching is 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 doable as long as you are able to hide the evidence rather nicely yeah but don't take a risk when you don't need to zach's not also desperate true. right now what's your hunger at three three okay you're, you're um you're riding the line but you're not quite there yet yeah uh Zach's gonna probably just go north to Ollie's bar because he knows he's, he's got a three pass to feed there at any point. Mm -hmm. um, and he'll feed at Ollie's bar before heading over to his uh, Lower West Side Chinatown esque um, safe house. Because I imagine Lower, it's getting oh, pretty late, uh, right? Uh, at this point, it's only 1 or 2 a.m. Oh. Um, You've got a good chunk of the night to go. You, know you haven't what? heard from Ava or Dakota all night and, and Ollie disappeared yeah I'll 
I'll get a lift. I'll because Ollie disappeared and Zach's going to be obviously a little bit concerned that Ollie just randomly disappeared. Uh, I'll swing past Ollie's bar, drop a message with the guy behind the bar if Ollie's not around and be like, you walk, okay, hope you Ollie's walk okay. in place. Place is pretty busy and there's Grant behind the table. He's pouring yeah. a glass. He looks up when you walk in. He looks kind of like behind you. He's like, hey, uh, where's boss? You're not coming back. Not yet. Something happened? No, but I think he's got lost on the way. He's probably got waylaid, busy for some reason. All right, well, if shit's going down, just let me know. I need to be ready. Well, He's then. shouting this over patrons as people are drinking and whatever, and they don't seem to give a shit. Yeah. I nod at him. Um, you know what? No, he I'll, nods at you back. I, I, like, tip him, like, five bucks. Oh, he thanks you. Uh, I, oh, for what? My handsome good looks? Sure, let's go with that. Hell yeah. And he smiles. <laughs> In pockets of five. And I'll walk a few blocks away. I'll get a lift from my friendly cab driver, apparently now. She's got <laughs> other uses. Um, and I'm going to pop up to the rack. And I'll ask her if she can just do a few circles of the, the park um, for the next night or so and tell me what she sees. Are you going to feed at the rack? Yeah, and I'll give her okay. uh, descriptions and faces of the people I saw and the weird tattoos that they had. She she takes some, she's clearly taking mental notes and she uh, she goes, I can go back tonight if you want, but if you prefer me go tomorrow, I can do that. Um, go tonight and go to the beginning of tomorrow, unless uh, I have need of you. I'm sure you'll do. I'll do. Fine. Don't push too hard. It's just curiosity. She nods. Yeah, of course. I just as long as it's, should I be bringing protection just in case they think you're sport sure will do is there anything else i can do other than and if i see them well should i do anything maybe take a picture but just take notes i just need to know if there are many of them and if they meet there often enough that it's worthwhile going back there yes, actually sir. don't take a picture just take notes don't take any physical evidence will do and she, she'll at that point. Uh, that's when the the streets are starting to get crowded, and she's a few blocks from the rack, and she stops. I imagine you would like to walk the rest of the way. I'll do. You open the door and close it behind, and she drives off to take care of business. Yeah, before Go she drives off. Your feeding roll. Yeah, before she drives off, uh, I'll have her place a call through to Ava's secretary, and tell Ava that if she's around, I'm in the rack. Ava, you will get at that message. Eventually, uh, your assistant will hop, hop, hovel over and show, Miss Heloise, your brother is uh, in town, in the uh, going to clubbing, apparently, in case you'd like to go say hello. Oh, perhaps I will. It's not always around these parts. She, uh, she just kind of gives you a nod. If I can do anything else, just let me know, madam. And she hush, just off. fetch my driver, perhaps. Well, she, she just pulls out her cell phone and starts dialing your driver. Within minutes, your driver will be there. Are you going to go meet him in the rack? Yeah, I'll go meet him. Okay. Uh, unfortunately uh, for Zach, nobody is nearly alone enough. For whatever reason, the streets are still packed on this night, and getting anybody by themselves is impossible. It's all you hen are, parties. It's unfortunately you are unable to feed for the rest of the scene. Nobody is able to grab your eye. And at the point where Zach is maybe prowling the streets, you can actually see a very familiar car wheel a corner, drive by you. Zach turns to meet and eventually parks directly in front of one of the clubs. Ava steps out of the vehicle and you head that way to greet one another. People are bumping it. Oh, sorry, sorry, taking drinks and hey, beautiful, and tries to get your number, but unable to, and ah, oh, where you going? And that's where. Zack steps up. Zack? Good night. Yes, though I'm quite hungry, so this was a good, uh, a good idea to come here. Are you here to feed as well? I was, but it seems to be all hen parties tonight, and I can't get anyone away for the life of them. Oh. Lovely. Well... I'm going to have to do something to get satiated because... Are you at three as well? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you may you may find something. Um, you, you may make your your, uh, your hunting roll, please. 
you okay. would like to go hunting. Um, how do I do that again? Uh, What's your hunter type? Uh, siren. Uh, persuasion plus charisma. Yeah, but as we say, it's like manipulation, persuasion, or something along those lines. I think there's all different hunter types for all of them, so you can figure you can pick the best. Yep. So go ahead and re roll the. Yeah. Uh, Got it. Yes. Okay. Oh! Uh oh. Messy. That just means it's extra good, so. <laughs> a messy <laughs> critical on, on, on feeding? Uh, that's, Maybe this it is means what happens you get when what this means, unfortunately, is that you let your hunger go too long. <laughs> you find somebody. He's alone. He's got that nerdy type look. He's got glasses on, short hair, dressed rather nicely. He's drinking a martini by himself outside, leaning against a wall, taking a quick smoke break before heading back into the club. He's not talking to anybody and leaving himself. Just a few moments of silence. But, as happens with all, when they catch your eyes and they see you, they can't help themselves. And he, for a moment, sees you and he flashes you a gentle smile and you found your mark. You make your way over and quickly talk his ear off. He's so polite, and nice. He actually, uh, with genuine interest, asks about your hobbies. And when you bring up photography, he actually brings up a few of his own. He's an amateur, definitely needs a little bit of uh, practice and guidance. Um, but you have a nice conversation. All the while, you can see his cheeks get red when you pay him extra attention or pay him a compliment. And his laugh is nervous, but it's kind of cute. You might have cared if you were mortal. But the more he blushes, the more excited he gets, the more you can feel the warmth of the blood emanating off his skin. Eventually, the conversation leads into more lewd conversation. While you try to get him to come to a nearby alley, you know the club he's in. There's some VIP rooms. You know these people. And so instead of being trashy, when conversation goes that way, you pull a few strings. You walk over to the bouncer and he ushers you in and all the way up to the third floor VIP rooms, ones reserved for those who know those in power. A private one, of course. You didn't intend for it to go this way, but it does. After some more drinks and conversation, 15, 20 minutes worth, eventually you start to make out. And that eventually leads to you kissing his neck, literally and figuratively and you begin to drain him. But you are unable to stop yourself. The blood is good. It's satiating, empowering. And there's a nice little buzz you're getting off this as well. You may feed yourself down to zero. Oh, <laughs> oh it was gonna be drunk. <laughs> and zero hunger. As the last drop of blood is pulled from his veins, and with that last drop of blood, so the last drop of his soul exits, <gasps> and his body goes limp in your arms. Oh no! <laughs> Oops. I imagine Taylor Swift's "Look What You Just Made Me Do" plays in the background. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 That's, I need to put rack music on. This is gonna get oh, And he was a cute one too. I just kind of, I leave the body there for a second. Um, I get up. I'm not gonna leave, leave. I just leave yeah, his body there. Um, and I just kind of peer out and see who's like kind of outside the hallway. This is the rack in one of the most prestigious clubs you could come across. There's personal security everywhere. And you know who they answer to. There's a few moments of concern when you realize you have a dead mortal's body sitting in the top floor of one of the most private clubs in the rack. Masquerade breach echoes in your mind. This could get you killed. Okay. Um... Oh, and of course, take a couple of stains. 
believe it's two. It might only be one. I will double check mm. after, but put two for two. Is you guys were not even at the break yet. <laughs> I had a messy crit. I literally roll. looked over and I was like, Ooh, oh boy, dear. you got 45 minutes before you can take a breath. Uh, oh my God. All righty. Well, okay. So what I'm going to do. Uh... Out of curiosity, Zach, she's gone for, you see her flirting and walking into the club and she's gone for like, when she enters the club, like 20 to 30 minutes. It's not out of the ordinary, but just for you to know where she is yeah. and know how she I'm, works. I'm probably in the club because I'm still trying to like pull. Like I'm trying to <laughs> and get- And you won't, unfortunately. Drink. I won't. <laughs> yeah, but, but I'm still trying great. for the duration of the scene. <laughs> You're so like, like trying I'm in the club, I'm just up. downstairs, right? You're down there dancing, trying to smooth he's things probably not, around. Uh, he's probably not dancing. He works uh, what's, mostly what's, like what's, what's your, via words and What's oratory. your charisma? Uh, my charisma is two, so I'm probably doing the Osiris thing. So I'm, I'm going to yeah. the bar and schmoozing with everyone. I, dancing's not his. He's got zero performance. So, although right now he's still <laughs> he's still humanity eight right now. This is Which a, means you can you can cut a rug. Oh dear. Mur so Chad, for those who are curious, you still gain stains from murdering at, even at low humanity. The, the the difference is the lower your humanity goes, the more likely you are to succeed those regret rolls because you have that many extra dice. So murder still gets you a stain. It's just, it's less impactful. It might be like a one stain in this case because it was through feeding that got too much rather than the two, which might be more premeditated. I can't remember. The yeah. book draws a delineation. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna double. I'm gonna yeah. double check in a, in a minute. But uh, so Ava, what do you do? Um, I will. Um, I'm gonna leave his body kind of just propped on the bed and. Uh, as I exit the hall, I'm going to just tell somebody, um, I just have to use the ladies' room. Please keep that room uh, open for me. Uh, one of the security guards just gives you a nod. Uh, you're reg you're re a regular here, and especially up in the VIP area. Very, 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 very few people are allowed up here. Um, I'm going to just go down the hall and I'm going to look for Zach. <laughs> I'm gonna run down, back down into the club quickly. Uh, I won't take too much time because uh, I don't plus, want. Are you going to? How much time? Are we, is, uh, give me, give like, me a time frame. A quick five minute glance through the club. Then like if I can find. We're only gonna it. get a. You're gonna get a wits awareness roll. Okay. Like, give it, Zach. Help me. Uh, this is why I awareness. don't take anyone to the club. This is this is it. This, this is, is why. No, this is a great lesson as to why you don't let hunger get that high. Look at that though. No hunger dice whatsoever. No hunger dice whatsoever. Wow, yeah. Huh. Isn't that nice? Yeah. <laughs> you look through the club and you don't see him, but you're gonna give five minutes. You're gonna rush through and, and hopefully find uh, where he is. And after you're pushing through some people with four successes, you do eventually at the very end as you're about to give up and whatnot, you back into somebody and you turn around and there's a, he gives you like a very, a uh, flashy smile, like a, a seductive smile before it's- And I'm like, over. now's not so the time. I'm not even- <laughs> no. I'm, I'm working angle here. I just, I kind of grab Zach by the arm and I'm I'll just like- right back. And um, I don't even say anything. I just pull him up with Are you going to bring up, him up the stairs? Up to the room, yeah. When you get to the second floor, when you're ready to bring him to the third floor where the VIP area is, um, the security guards, whoa, whoa, whoa. You are, but not him. Why not him? I'm bringing because him. He doesn't, he doesn't what? Uh, he, he, he stopped to let you talk politely, but after you finish and he's like, he's not allowed. Why is he, he not have, allowed? He doesn't have permission. He's coming to my room. Your room by uh, temporarily, it's not a room you own. If you want to try and persuade him, you're more than welcome to. Um, uh, manipulation plus persuasion. I will. Um, Are you gonna... I'm gonna say, well, I don't think the upper management would be very happy if you denied me back to my room. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, manipulation. Where is it? Uh, persuasion, manipulation. Can I uh, will, willpower? Yeah, you're allowed to willpower. Uh, you can willpower and reroll three. 
Okay. I also um, remember your first tier uh, ability in, what's it called? Presence. We often forget that, and it is amazing. Ah? Uh, uh, or... Yeah, I don't know if it applies in this case, it's just worth noting, because I know we forgot it that for a while. Um... Sorry, let me. Uh... I know it's a scene, and I know it's a, a huge bonus to your, I think, social checks. But let me I think it. it's specific. I think oh, it might be charisma, um, or it could be charisma and persuasion. I entirely forgot to do, um, which which this kind of matters. Uh, you're dealing with a mortal right now. Oh, okay. You have what? Minus one. Minus one because humanity five. You so you right. can reroll. You can still reroll three, uh, even with the minus one. Wait. Yep, you can still reroll three even with the minus one though, so don't worry too much. Anyway, uh, mitigation plus plus transfer is composure to add presence rating to any skill roll involving persuasion or performance, as well as to other charisma related yeah, roles. Yeah, persuasion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They only is resist it? if they're expecting it's something free, weird okay. or like, yeah, it's a free one. It's it's a tier one. Okay, go ahead and make me a manipulation presence plus uh, versus their composure intelligence. I think they only resist if they are Where? expecting or supernatural. Well, things. you're sitting you're sitting with private security of, of Kindred. They're prepped mm. to deal with Kindred problems constantly, even if they fail. Are you gonna um, use that ability, by the way, or no? Yes, I am. Yes, I am definitely gonna use it. Where is, I cannot find presence, sorry. Presence, down the bottom, it's one of your uh, disciplines. I think you have like three dots in it. Oh, yes. <laughs> Uh, you might not accept uh, sorry. already. Uh, that's not... Oh, I have to... I don't have to roll rouse for this, so... No. Uh, no, it's free. Um, sorry. Manipulation plus discipline. Beautiful. Woo! That's Oof. critical as well. <clears throat> Add the presence rating to any skill roll. So, um, what's your presence rating? Three. Three, so you can add you add three to those two successes because technically I did make you make a manipulation persuasion, and uh, that immediately makes it a five. But it would have to, yeah, we, it's yeah. I'll say fine. We will we'll add it to the retroactively add it because you would have been using it. Um, so you kind of just you, instead of saying you may it, you may go, he looks to you uh, with a furrowed brow, but eventually kind of gives you an up and down. And he's like. Fine. But if something happens up there, it's on your ass. Ava just smiles nicely at him and uh, Zach's quickly super just pulls confused. Zach. Okay. I just pull Zach with me into the room. Oh, it's add three dice, not add three to the success. It's not just add, add. It's add that number uh, of dice that is equal to your presence. So you add your presence to a social point. Oh, those sort of things. I, I, I misunderstood. Still, uh, can, you, can you roll me 3d10 real quick then? My apologize, my, my apologies. Also, my apologize. <laughs> my apologize. <laughs> okay, you didn't get any successes, so you're still rolling with two. I apologize, though. This is she's. We rarely used awe before, so yeah. we're just kind of it. Um, you can still use a willpower and re-roll three. Yeah. That is still I, something you can do. Yes, I would like to do okay. that. Please so, do. So, uh, willpower. I just do the willpower roll. Uh, uh, if you do willpower re-roll, it'll default three, and you just hit enter. There's a willpower re-roll button. Yes, I see it. Nice. One you get success. one extra success to the three. <sighs> With three successes, uh, he's eerie, but he will follow. He he will follow you up. He will allow you in, but he will follow you up, or have somebody stick with you, whether it's him or somebody else. Does he follow us like to into the room? The ru okay. While Zach is there, wherever Zach is, a security guard will also be. So if you bring him into the room, a security guard is going to follow him into the room. I'm very confused. Zach, yeah, Zach, Zach just kind of got yanked, pulled, and now Zach, she's like, please, you got to let us in. And, you know, I think like Zach's already so got an inkling considering how bad Ava's reaction Something right went now. wrong. Doesn't want to believe yes. it, but like, yes. just, like half face palm um, like this right now. Okay, well, I'm not gonna let the guy in the room with us. So if he like comes up to the room, yeah, um, he's like, well, I listen. All right, fine, but wherever he goes, one of my boys, he's not allowed up there. You have to understand. 
I'm like, sure my sister just wants a private word. We don't need to go into a private room or anything. We can just find a he looks corner over to the second by. floor. Uh, there's the second floor, unlike the third floor with private rooms, the second floor is like a VIP area. It's one open area with tables overlooking the dance floor. There's a few tables you could easily go to, and he, Zach is allowed under these tables here. If you just want to sit him down and talk. And so he kind of just openly gestures to the op some open tables on the second floor. He's like, you got a couple tables up here. Thank you very much. Um, I'm sure my sister's just a little bit flustered. Um, busy night. Uh, fine. Fine. Uh, Zach, just come with me and I'll bring him to those tables uh, uh, quickly. Uh, yep. I'll just kind you of do, hurry. You hurry over to one of the tables with two chairs, a smaller one that only sits two people. You sit on one side, Zach sits on the other. Zach, I was really hungry. Was? Yes, I'm not hungry anymore. Okay. <laughs> How hungry would you say you are right now? Not at all. Oh. As in, I've. Yep, no. That's good. He enough. was a cute boy, too. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh my god. There's. You know. I have. It's, it's a shame. I'm going to look around, see if anyone's listening to this conversation. <laughs> this is because people are having conversation around you. There's not anybody super close to you. Aren't we in a club? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like... It's loud. It's yeah. super loud. Yeah. Like, Don't actually, worry. The difficulty actually, to hear the conversation is very high. It's it's much harder to hear a conversation in a club from nearby than it is to hear it in correct. like a an open park from miles away. Um, Absolutely correct. But I had to make a roll. Oh, yeah. I have to also make a roll because I'm totally worried. Uh... Three. Is There's nobody. Okay. Doesn't seem like anybody's paying fucking any attention. I lean forwards. Ava. I haven't fed in a lot of nights right now. I don't know how much I can help. Look, it's never gotten this bad before when I'm here at the rack. And I don't know what do. How long do you have the room for before they will start questioning it? Uh, we've only been in there for like 15 minutes. So okay, how much longer do you have the room for? Uh, probably they'll start after like a half hour or so, they're going to start getting suspicious. So like 15 more minutes? Basically, yeah. Okay. Uh, is there a and fire escape at the back? I it's a third don't... floor. There will generally be a fire escape somewhere on that floor. Possibly there because... is one. There is a fire escape up there. But there's people uh, in the halls and stuff. So if I just walk out, I can't. He's in the room right now. Okay. There, <clears throat> there are no windows in any of the private rooms upstairs. Something important. To no. No, I assume there wouldn't be. <laughs> yeah, they're private rooms. Mm. Zach <sighs> and Ava. Um, can I get an intelligence? Sure. An intelligence, um... Resolve? No, it's not a memory roll. Politics, please. Okay. Is this really just, domain just politics? Not really domain, no. Okay. Just the likelihood of... The, the, the concern that would arise, uh, I think, for Zach at this point, and Ava, probably now that she has a mind of her, uh, mind of herself, Private is as private as you can get. It's You're not sure if it's a thousand percent private in there or if there's any recording devices in there. Uh, depends on how much you trust Bella says that the place is open to all kindred. Um, doesn't mean that there is, I'm not, I'm not putting that out there. It's just a thought that would occur to the oh characters. God. But oh you don't God. know, it could, if Ava, uh, Bella has been an honest prince uh, up to this point. True. Maybe there is no recording equipment up there whatsoever. But being the paranoid conspiracy theorist that Zach is, and some of that rubbing off on Ava as well, the thought would pop into your mind. Yeah. I, I don't. Uh, I need like. Mm, <sighs> I pull out a, like a really long, extendable sippy straw. <laughs> I 
I'm gonna use one of your emergency. The one you carry no. one at a time. I'm using both of them. Oh, all right. No. There you go. You just make sure you take them off your inventory. I'm get gonna, one just per. looking at Ava the entire time, going. I'm sorry. Yeah, you only get one per at humanity five, right? Uh, I'm technically a high humanity, but it, I, I'm normal uh, on blood bags but at the moment anyway. mechanically, like for blood drinking, it's not going to make your blood better for you. Okay. It's yeah, just I'm, I'm, normal, I'm normal at the moment on five. So this is going on four and stuff like that. It'll bring you down to one anyway. That's as low as you yeah, can get with yeah. both of them. So there you yeah. go. Right. I need to know where the fire escape is. I need your car with your driver around the back below the fire escape, nice and silently. I can arrange that. I need to know the layout of the room. I need to know if there's any hiding spaces in the room where you could hide someone or something. It's just a room with a bed. It's I've like really a 10 grown. by 10 room with a, with a, not even a bed. There's no bed there. It is just a table like a sofa? and some chairs. A table okay. and yeah. Okay. A sofa, yeah, sofa? comforts, but nothing, nothing more than that. It's clearly meant for very simple. I can work with a sofa. Room. Okay. Um... Right, what I want you to do, if you pop up there once more, that's fine. If you pop up there twice, they're gonna really ask questions, right? Right. Well, you said you were gonna be back. You yes. Yeah, but if she goes up and then comes out and then goes back again, that would be too much. So she can They'd go back like, once, yeah. Yeah, like, what are you doing? <laughs> Ava, go get two drinks from downstairs, take them upstairs like you are casually going up there. Did you see any cameras on your way out of the room? Not that I wasn't really looking, but no. Intelligence also, resolve, memory check. Also, as Zach's drinking the blood bags, you see his face just slightly go a little bit less colorful um, because I lose my discretion. <laughs> I like that discretion. <laughs> <clears throat> Two successes for that one. There are definitely cameras in the hallway. Security. The it's hallway had cameras. Security cameras. I can't do anything about cameras. Mm, yes. <sighs> this is really bad. It's <sighs> all coming. It's all starting to weigh down Zach and Ava. This is a situation there might be no clean answer to. To drink a mortal dry. I mean. I could just come clean and face whatever masquerade breach punishment and just really say it was an accident. And I've had a really clean record for 10 years now. The alternative is, and I like pull out like a little pocket knife and like a bin bag is of duct tape. You go up there put his body in a bin bag, you duct tape it up, you go to the back of the sofa, you take the knife, you open up the back of the sofa, and you put him into the little space in the back of the sofa, put the sofa back against the wall, and then somehow you get the people out of the hallway and you get him to the back stairs. If I go up there, I will be seen by cameras. Can I... Uh... Intelligence, can I get an intelligence occult from both of you? <laughs> As options start bubbling this to the surface like, as to what to do. Some like, uh, oh, this is some like <laughs> serial killer level uh, Spend thinking some time. here. <laughs> it's been crazy. a few minutes and <laughs> you know it's supposed to happen right after, but you could make it. You could turn attempt. him. <gasps> How long would it take him to wake up if he was turned? Yeah, it could be anywhere within the same night to 24 hours. I like that idea. Ooh, it's bad, that is, but... That is an incredible masquerade breach. <laughs> this is a masquerade breach. Not only that, breach. you're breaking the rule of no siring from Bella. But if the room is as private as it seems... Ooh, I, I mean, look, a dead person, but a secret siring... A dead person's hard to cover up, but a secret siring might be easy to cover up. Better, to, easier to cover up. Okay. I, 
and it's, it's just I'm not I'm not saying that openly is probably a bad idea right now, but it pops into Ava's mind first. With the it pops person. into Ava's mind, and she's like, "There is another option." That could take up to twenty four hours. You do not have that room that long. Hmm. So he doesn't regain consciousness or anything. Like you don't even know if you won't know if it worked until he opens his eyes. And you only have a few more minutes to do that before he's really dead. I mean, it could be too late already. Yeah. You don't know. But Put there are way. also rumors out there. With the critical success, Ava, there are rumors out there uh, occasionally whispered through the Rose Gardens that there are a few people who were able to bring somebody into the kindred life days after they were killed. It's supposedly happened before. Uh, well, the, yeah, that could work, but it's just the, mo the the matter of getting him out of the room. Yeah, I need him to regain his consciousness. Um, <sighs> okay. Right. Firstly, I give her my bug detector. She doesn't have technology, so she's probably going to be terrible with it. Yep. Firstly, it's worth checking if the room is bugged. Just turn it on and move it slowly over objects in the room, and if it goes bleep, they're bugged. Secondly, okay. you can hide him in the sofa, and then we have some time. If you wrap him, they won't be able to smell it going off for a while, but they might notice he hasn't left. Hmm. <clears throat> Um, Alternatively, you just own up to it. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't see myself wrapping him up and putting him in a sofa. That's just not gonna work. Put the pocket knife back in. <laughs> uh, the only. What if we tried to fake his death to something else, or I just come out frantically saying that he's. I'm pretty sure that a frantic death in a VIP room when guards are watching the door would definitely be a she probably drank him to death. The worst case scenario is I could get the guard to literally take him to the back stairway and dump him for you, but then the guard would be questioned because he's on CCTV. Yeah, the cameras, right. <sighs> well, I could just... The option that seems, oh, and things were going so well for us. I could just own up to it and just face, it could, it could be a really severe punishment at literally the most severe, I, I don't know. If you want to deal with it, we'll deal with it now and we'll deal with it fast. We'll talk to the people, we'll get it taken down the back stairs and we'll get it hidden away. They will know yes. and they will report it, but it will be dealt with. And hopefully yes. any punishment will be minor. I feel if we try to get too deep into this, it'll make things even worse. There's too many... There's too many things that could go wrong with the cameras, with the body, I think. Okay. I, I messed up. I should not be that hungry ever again. I'm Mathis. sorry. Camera guards and stuff in this place who they're hired, they know kind of what's going on, they know everyone, etc. Um, do what do they know about the whole feeding thing? Because it seems to be they know quite a bit about that. <clears throat> um, to your knowledge off that, I guess I would require a, an intelligence politics role. Sure. This is domain, so your specialty would be... Woo. Five. Five successes. Um, no. They wouldn't know about feeding. They know uh, some criminal activity happens here and they likely believe they work for some sort of, which they're not necessarily wrong, criminal empire, criminal guard, but no, they're still mortals. They can't know. Not all okay. of, uh, ghouls are the only ones that are ride that line and not every person, not every personal security guard. Is Okay, if they believe they work for some sort of criminal mob boss, then they're gonna keep it relatively quiet anyway. They'll Maybe. report it back up afterwards immediately, but. Yes, I mean, they still know the rules. No murdering. Like, there's still the rules that apply. Okay. You... 
Fine. Let's do it this way. Ava. We'll go talk to the security guard. We'll tell him that unfortunately someone crossed the person who owns the club. And then we need to dispose of them. We need to take them out back. We take them back to the car. And then you can own up to it later. You can own up to it, but we'll deal with the situation as we're meant to under the masquerade. Okay? All right. All right. That would politically be a reasonable course of action, would it not, Mathis? If someone breaches the masquerade, they deal with it and own up to it immediately. Uh, I mean, the most honorable of kindred do. Um, yeah. Whether you're going to get the body or they're going to take it is, you're not sure. Yeah, okay. Okay. I need you to get your car around back. Okay. Um, do you have a phone? <laughs> I can't call him to come around back. He usually just comes to the front to pick me up. I don't do communication anymore after all this time. Okay. I don't do technology. I I mean, he circles around the front. If we can go to the back and somehow get the body around to the front of the club, it's probably not the best option because there's a lot of people. Okay. Right. I will text Raven to text her driver because I never contact anyone who's going to do something as dumb as this um, to tell him to come around back immediately and meet us below the fire escape. You send you, Zach pulls out a phone and shoots off a text very quickly. Right. Let's what do you do while he's texting? Okay. The bouncer still stand at the front of the, the stairs when you uh, stand up to approach. Okay. Button up my waistcoat. Let's do this properly. <laughs> <sighs> Look, we've got a slight problem. Make sure that like we're being conspiratorial. I'm definitely using my body language to try and convey that I'm talking to him and trying to shun mm -hmm. anyone else nearby out. Um. Someone crossed your employer. My colleague here dealt with him, but we need to be able to uh, take him out of the club surreptitiously. You can tell your employer it's all above board. We'll make sure it's dealt with, but he needs to be removed quietly from the premises. He looks to Ava. There's a body in the other room. Correct. She's he reached up flustered. to his earpiece. He reached up to his earpiece. There you go. Yeah, it's a, a code four in the room. Okay. If you just let us. Our boss will be informed the body will be taken care of. If you let us take care of it, we can mm, take. That's not how it works here. Okay. Do you mind if we quickly deal with any incriminating evidence he has on this person? Ava will. You have to stay. Okay. Ava. Phone, camera, all that sort of stuff. If he has any of it, remove it. Understood. Steps out of the way, let's Ava pass. Ava, as you make your way up the stairs and back into the small hallway where there's only a few doors leading to private rooms, two security guards walk in before you. One has a rifle slung over his back, the other has a pistol on his thigh. They walk in, they've just got their simple tight blue shirts and tight pants on, their typical security guard outfits. Um, and uh, one is uh, takes a knee next to the body on the ground as you walk in to take care of whatever evidence you may have left behind. He puts the, the, as he's like lining the body up and just kind of straightening it out, um, eventually you hear somebody walk in with a, a crinkling of plastic. A body bag is brought in by two others. And then there's a moment. Hey, uh, hey, can you, can you take a look at this? 
whispering to one another, low voices, uh, wits awareness. Mm, I know yes. what they saw. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Uh, awareness. Messy criticals are a good time. Two. You look over, uh, the one that's actually lining up the body actually moves the head to the side a little bit, and you actually see tiny little red pricks on the neck as he's kind of lining it. And he's like, what the fuck? As another one leans down, what the hell is that? And then he looks back, looks down to, then looks down to that. Did you? Oh, I. Hey, yeah. And then another one comes over, he goes, uh, yeah, one many... walks out and he, and, he, and he reaches to the earpiece and he reaches over to the earpiece. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, before he starts saying anything, I... You have three guards in the room currently. Uh, no, I can only do it for one. Uh, for the one who is about to um, talk in his earpiece, I'm yep. going to try to entrance him. So I'd be okay. like... So entrance is a rouse check or is it not? It is a rouse check, yes. So make me a rouse oh. check. And let me know what the, uh, what, what do we got here? Entrancement, one rouse Oops. check. Woo. I clicked well, it twice. Well, you succeeded both. So okay. there you go. So you stay at zero hunger. Isn't that nice? Charisma plus presence versus uh, composure plus witch. The vampire wings game started. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. After all, you can mm -hmm. lick clothes recent dead people. Yeah, recent. He's been dead for like almost 30 minutes. Uh, <sighs> let's see. The vampire only needs to gain the subject attention when win a contest of charisma of presence versus, so you roll your charisma plus presence, remember minus one, your humanity five, versus composure wits. Uh, the effect lasts an hour. Okay, this is the one that um, lasts like fucking forever if you roll really well. Mm -hmm. I rolled three successes, so not the greatest. You've always got willpower. Um, Adds dice yeah. equal to the presence rating to any social dice pool against the entrance subject. Um, he gets a roll. Not nearly as big. What? Excuse me? Oh, that's a D410. D410? <laughs> uh, Damn it. Uh, try again. <laughs> there we go. Uh, yeah, you succeed. Uh, for okay. technically two hours, you will add your mm -hmm. presence roll to any social roll you roll against this man. You're not going to so try to... So he goes to reach for his earpiece and you... You had just entered the, the room and you see them looking down and this guy wa is wa about to walk past you and leave the room as he reaches for an earpiece and that's when you catch his eye. He goes to say something, but what do you say? You're not gonna try to call anybody else in here, are you? Is this, uh, uh, go right ahead and, and is this like, a, are you trying to be, are you gonna try and intimidate him? Are you gonna try and be- I'd be a little, seduct a little seductive about it. Okay, so uh, please, beyond that, what else do you say? I'm curious. How about we just leave this between us? The things that I like to do with the guys that I'm alone with. We, uh, for, for those who are curious why she didn't automatically lick, rip, uh, lick the bite, I will reiterate, bestial critical mm -hmm. Panic. is not something that she's doing normal. This is a, a an exception to the rule. It is a messy. She got what she wanted, but something bad happened in turn. Now, uh, manipulation plus uh, persuasion. And if you're going to try to be seductive, you get to add your plus one. Yes. Manipulation. It was a bestial critical. There is a difference. Bestial yes. criticals are not clean by rules. Plus the beast gets what it wants. Uh, how do I add my plus one? I believe the here. example they use in the books is when you bestial critical a stealth check, you literally slit his throat to keep yeah, him Yeah, it's quiet. like, yeah, your stealth is you kill everyone. Um, I might be doing this, uh, so I can do manipulation, persuasion. Okay, there we go. Plus if you one. roll okay. anything that's yep. persuasion, you get plus three dice from your ore, remember? Yeah, which I was gonna actually just see if I could, I wanna also like, cause awe, I can, have multiple people kind or, of or is you and it applies to the entire scene okay okay and so... a torridor bestial critical hmm. those are my favorite so seven critical uh, seven successes a critical hit he looks to you when you say keep this between us and there's a hint of uh, a gentle smile a little flash of your teeth and maybe you even straighten out your dress to just show a little bit more cleavage and then 
there is almost uh you can see his pupils dilate just a bit when he catches eye of you and he keeps his hand on his earpiece but he stops talking and he walks expecting you to follow do you he walks out of the room or he he's walks... walking out of the room but he he kind of gives you a, a, a wry like oh hell yeah smile but he he doesn't he doesn't continue to talk but he keeps his hand on the piece um and the other two are still in there yes the other two are still clearly talking but their other one's starting to prep the body bag okay um i will follow him sure um just eventually just kind of, he, yeah. he doesn't lead you far he leads you just kind of away from the room and he's like what do you have in mind? If it's so mm. important to you, that little neck wound. Mm, well, maybe. Um, why don't you stay here and let me take care of the rest of it? And then. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm happy to, but. Listen. And he, he, he reaches into his pocket, pulls out uh, like what looks like somebody else's business card. And he reaches like, do you have a pen? I go in my purse. <laughs> <I> <laughs> yeah, you, you grab one. <laughs> he scribbles something down very, very quickly. And he keeps going for a bit and he's like, uh, all right. And he's like, here, gives you the pen back politely. It's like my phone number and the hotel I'm staying at. Hmm. Maybe later hmm. after this is all taken care of. I'm expecting see you tonight i'd be disappointed if i didn't i wouldn't want people to know about that weird wound or anything of course not and he hands you the card all right and he kind of smiles all right and he then he just <laughs> weirdly kind of awkwardly scratches at his chest and um walks away okay um i will head back to the other room. Well, by the time the you get back was. in there, the body is already zipped up in the plastic bag and uh, they both got it. One's got the feet, one's got the shoulders and they are starting to back out. Um, before the hallways take... have been cleared with the exception of personal security, of course. Sorry, boys. Um, I I had something I had to do with that body before. <laughs> and once again, Ava does her seductive. <laughs> Entrancement is per person, so you're gonna need. Uh, if you're trying to entrance them, you need to. You got to do each one individually. Uh, so <laughs> I still have. <laughs> uh, I believe this is Cries in Zach. That's that's how I'm subtitling this right now. Um. You know what? Ava just pulls out like a string of comdoms, just like go for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this needs to be on multiple people. Uh, I'm gonna try entrancing one of the other guys. You can all still. Oh, that's what I was saying. Doesn't the all still You're already, still apply? They all get a chance to resist because you. They still all have a chance to resist, so Ew. you have to roll the all. Okay, so then. then yes, let let's let's do all. I thought that that was like a good. Make me a roll. Okay. Uh, doo -doo -doo. How many successes? Oh. Four. Uh, but if it's just a, uh, yeah, it's not a crit, so tie always goes to the player. Oh. Um, so you get to add your presence rent roll to your next uh, social check against them. Um, however, they are mortal, so you still take a minus one. What are you trying to do? Uh, um. You're trying to convince them to let to take the put the body down, unzip it, and let you mess with the body. Correct. <laughs> Okay. Um, I was given I permission give you... mm. by your boss mm -hmm. to examine the body before you take it away. Of course you were. Manipulation persuasion. Remember, you get your plus three minus one. So just plus two. Sorry, just give me a minute here. Okay, four successes. <clears throat> Do you want to add willpower? Do you want to willpower any of them? Are you good with that role? Let's add the willpower because this is really bad. Uh, so you get to reroll three of those still? 
It's a crit. You had two That's more. Nine. You had a crit. So, uh, one kind of kind of glares at you for a minute, like, mm, and the other one says, "What do you need to do?" I just need to. Switch as the as they begin to walk back into the room, clearly at least letting you walk into the room with you. It'll only take a second. I need to search the body. I was given permission. Fine, fine. They walk back in the room, shut the door behind you. As Ava shuts the door behind her, she locks <laughs> it. They gently put the body back on the ground. One just quickly unzips it, make it quick. This shit's uh, dangerous to keep around. Let's go. What I know, do you sweetie. Do? Mm, sweetie. <laughs> I hate dealing with messes. Um, I will quickly look for phone, look for identification, look for anything on this um, on this poor boy. Wits investigation. Uh, you don't find any. God damn it! Uh, so nothing in his pockets, or or and just pockets are empty. You feel okay. around, nothing in his pockets. All right, nothing. Um, yeah, uh, so that's it. I will uh, just let them take okay. the body then. So you stand up and you kind of like, all right, I'm good. Damn, yeah. All right, that one actually says thanks for making it quick. And I said I would. Right back up. He's, he smiles uh, and he's uh, one of the other, the other one that's with him, who's been quiet the whole time. And as, as the zipper, it finishes and he lifts the body, he's like, I guess I wouldn't want to cross your path. And he kind of gives you a almost. He gives you a grin. Some people I let cross my path, and I smile at him. He clearly, <laughs> clearly listens. And he, and he, as he's walking out, he's like, "I'm, I'm here Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays." And he walks out uh, as he carries a dead body. Ava's calendar for tomorrow is 8 p.m. Dave, 9 p.m. Grant, 10 p.m. Craig. <laughs> <laughs> 11 p.m. Uh, everyone else? Look, this is the only way I can clean up my messes, okay? You have your ways, I have my ways. <laughs> <laughs> and as the body is taken uh, to another room in this area, back stairwell likely, and Ava ma makes her way down the stairs, and Zach is still waiting there, probably worried, looking worried <laughs> like, with his arms crossed. Just... I, I am deliberately engaging the guard at the front of the stairs so that he's not paying attention to anything going on behind. Sure. And you have his attention. Um, we will cut to break here. Oh. I can't believe it's only been two fucking hours. Oh, this has been so painful. Oh. <laughs> I'm just glad I'm not the one in trouble this time. Oh. <laughs> no. I'm not in trouble yet. No, you're you're the hound. You go get the people that are in trouble. I know, I'm so excited. Yeah, Dakota's <laughs> gonna be knocking on my door now. Ava, oh, please yeah. come with me. <laughs> knock, knock, knocking on Ava's door. <laughs> Okay, oh. when it comes to brain, we're back in a few minutes when we'll find out will Ava die or will she only be branded horrifically? Back in a second. <laughs>
Hello, welcome back to Tracy makes a new character on stream. Uh, <laughs> Vampire the Masquerade, Sun of Shadows, episode five. Things are going down. Take it away, Mathis. We'll take it away, the two of you. At the, it's we left off when Ava came down the stairs, meeting up with Zach. Zach seems mm -hmm. like he's having light conversation. By the way, E, can you give us your good mic? Ah, you're yes, on your, you are. Uh, you are yes. on my walkabout. Sorry about that. No worries. I'm going on a walkabout. I want to be English really bad. Oh, oh I think Whoa. we just. Ah. 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 Okay. Oh, we saw the, the bad. We saw the bad mic. Oh, but now wow. we're also shifting That's every intense. position. Choose virtual. That background. is very intense. I'm seeing through your eyeballs. <laughs> yeah. Welcome back. Wow. Sorry about that. Uh, uh. That's ooh, kind ooh. of working. Oh, it's, it's, is that like the 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 Logitech green screen? No, thing? it's the inbuilt Zoom one, but. I'm mm. like, no, I just want to turn it off. How do I turn it off? <laughs> it's like you're a thin blood trying to use Bobsy Skate. Yeah. Fucking it up. You're like half there. I don't you know what? I can just I can just do this. This is the way to fix it. Come here. <laughs> there we Green go. Green screen. <laughs> I wasn't gonna bother with that, but fine, you know what? I don't know how to turn it off otherwise. Right, and everyone's in the wrong boxes now. That's great. No, they're all um, in the right boxes. No. Everything's fine. Because no. I'm like, oh, yeah. Cool. Right, anyway, sorry. So, Panicking. Yes, Ava will approach Zach. Very, um. Yeah, so, like. Looking, looking not, not reassured. <laughs> Give me a second. Um, they've, they've taken. Okay. The body. Do you get so, any evidence? You remove the. There was nothing on him. Okay, so you removed the... Right. Mm. Let's... Any uh... of the guards see anything weird? No uh, evidence? Are we alone? No. Are, or is the I mean, the still... bouncer dude is still right the there. You guys are dude. sitting on the on the stair platform, unless you guys want to go back to the to a table. No, I'm just like off to the side of the guy, talking in low tones. They saw... I just kind of... just rubbed my neck, like... Where did they take the body? Tell as I know, they do whatever the hell they do with it. I was at the front of the corridor. Did I see where they took the body? Was it back? You just see like him a... walk. Yeah, you just saw them walk down the hallway. You don't know where they went after that though, because you're at the okay. like, bottom of the stairwell, so you can only yeah. just see the door. Yeah, they went back though. That's fine. Um, right. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Do you want to do I anything got, about that? I got uh, one of the guy's numbers, so... Okay, how many guys were there who saw that? There were three in total. Okay. The other guy told me when he's working here. And then I, yeah, I mean... I can maybe... I took care of the one guy for a little while at least. He won't be saying anything. I can handle him. I can handle him later tonight. But the other two... Right. Did you get their names? No. Okay, how much money do you have on you? A few hundred? Why? Okay. <laughs> I just handed him my, my <laughs> wallet. I'll just take my whole wallet, damn it. <laughs> Go up to the guy at the front of the 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 guy literally like a few meters away. Yeah, yeah the guy that was yeah. He, he come turn back. He's like, oh, sorry, long night. Looks like my colleague here missed something. Unfortunately, I she's don't. a little bit green at things, and I know that this is a very very annoying night. Listen, I get it. You want out. You want up, but and you're gonna try and persuade him, right? Mm. I just Bribe show him. him. Yeah. Yeah. So you're gonna basically you're gonna get manipulation plus persuasion. Uh, you're gonna hand him however much money that Ava had. Ava, what is your resources? Dots three. Yeah. I think three. I so check. I mean, on hand, you probably had like three hundred on hand, maybe in cash. So you whip out like three hundred bucks, and uh, you know it's a, it's a lot. It's a lot. You know. uh, do you carry big bills or small bills? Big bills. 
So it's, it's some it's Benjamins. Three, yeah, it's three hundred one hundred dollar bills. I like how three, yours three, three, three one hundred different. Bills. How Zach's would be. You're like, I've got three one hundred dollar bills. Zach's like, I have one dollars and five dollars. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, nah, I'm the big spender, Ava. <laughs> so you can add you can add two d ten to this roll. Okay. Messy critical. Um, wow. You know what? I'm gonna spend a point of willpower. That to, ten. To, you can't re-roll hunger die. Oh, you, I can re-roll one of the tens. Can you? Oh, you can't. I thought you could only roll failed dice. No, you can roll any dice on a uh, a, uh, a I'm willpower checking that. I, I sure. feel like that's not right, but hang on, let me double check. Uh, willpower one twenty two and one fifty seven. Oh boy. You you might be right, but I gotta check. No, totally. Yeah, which is why well, something I could have done. I don't <laughs> want to do an Ava and make the situation worse. Yeah. But I know who I get you. 157, I guess would be the other one. Willpower. Uh, spending willpower. No, you are correct. Any dice, any dice at all. Reroll <laughs> up to three regular dice. Oh no! I only got <laughs> less successes. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Uh, so that's a good thing to note in case you ever have messy criticals when feeding. I will make sure yep. to keep that as a note. If I'd roll okay. another 10, I'd be fucked. He he takes a moment as you as you start speaking your words and he's just like, listen, man, I can't let you. And you kind of just hand a 300. He's like, <sighs> all right. Yeah. But I definitely do it subtly, wrong. like I hand it in front of him, like grab his hand. I don't want it to be seen from the camera because I know that he'll act differently if he's going to get seen on camera. Well, he steps aside. Thank you very much. Let's you by. What's the plan? You go up there. They're gone. Body's gone. Room's open. You can see the door open. Which way did they take the body? Back. They went back. There's a. Uh, oh, I there's, asked there's, him. Oh, uh, he, oh, he's, oh, he, he, he's like, that's not for you to know. I need to see it real quick. Otherwise your employer will be unhappy. He kind of just holds up, he holds up a finger. He goes to his earpiece. He starts chatting away, talks for a couple minutes, uh, eventually turns. What do you need the body again for? Unfortunately, there's some evidence left on it. I'd rather not discuss the exact nature of it, but my sister my sister here was unfortunate enough to have left something behind. Okay, and uh, brings it, uh, goes back to talking for a few minutes, hushed voices, some nodding and low grunting. Go into the room, they'll bring you back. Thank you. Um, by the way, just so we are aware, Obviously, we don't want this getting spread too far around, and I understand you have discretion. Who were the other three people who saw the body tonight? Uh, he... Who was your friend? The the other one that was with you. Which one are you talking about? So there was the guy was that the I trans, and then the one, yeah. There's this is the guy who. This is just the bouncer in front of the stairs. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 okay. I, got I'm it. just Sorry. asking, like, look. At the end of the day, we're going to need to make sure we have information and control on this. I need to know the names of the three people. Otherwise, if someone talks and I only have your name, they're going to come to you. We don't want that to happen. He uh, he looks for a minute. You you have the name um, of one of them anyway uh, from the business uh, the business guy Dave. writing his name on it. So I'm just going to give you a bunch of names real quick because okay. do we have a list of, of random names yet on the Patreon? Uh, let me check for you. Because I don't have a link to it. Uh, they haven't been updated recently, but we have a Kenneth Montgomery. All right, one's Kenneth. Um, and the bouncer. This bouncer is Kenneth, and then uh, everyone else is female on the list. That's fine. Uh, the other, the other three are Terry, uh, Leo, Kenneth, Terry, Leo, Leo, Bastiano, Bastiano. Okay, great. Eventually, the they, the body shows up at the end of the hall. The same two who took it out are taking it back. They look pissed off that they're walking back here again. Um, they bring it back into the room once again in full view, because every time they bring it out, they have to shut all the other doors, clear out the hallway, make sure there's only per, uh, personal security and, ca and cameras uh, going. 
then the body will come out uh, hardly brought into the room with the two security guards. You're let in uh, as well, Zach. Door shuts behind you as the two security guards both stand back and cross arms and leave the body zipped up and they're like, get to it and make it quick. Okay. All right. Quick question. I'm going to pull out my spare money as well. I'm going to start mm -hmm. counting in front of them. <laughs> one, two, three. Yes. I, I probably Ooh, seven, have like 17, 20 19, bucks in ones. 20? Like 20, no, probably 50 bucks in fives. Because um, most of your resources is scattered as physical things around the city. Yeah, like so. most of the cash I have on me is like tip cash. It's for tipping people. Yeah, um, so you've got maybe like 30 or 40 bucks on you somewhere around there. I probably have about 50 just because drinks in the rack 15? are expensive. Sure, we'll say, but, we'll say yeah. you got 50. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm just going to look at them in turn and go, okay, just need to know quickly. Sorry about this. I understand this is an annoying night and this is a long job. I understand. I got you. Firstly, only you three saw the body, right? Yeah. Cool. Is anyone working CCTV or is it automatically recorded? Or is that one of your jobs? Uh, uh one just says asking a lot of very personal questions. I work for the same people you work for, and I'm in charge of cleaning things up. He shakes his head. Ain't no way for you to prove that or otherwise. Cameras have caught things. He looks around, ain't seen no cameras in here. That's fine. <sighs> Ava, do you know if anyone watches the cameras in here or is it recorded to a digital media and no one sees it? Because All I you need know, to Ava, sure... is Bella says this place is private as heck. Oh, totally. I'm not asking Ava for what she knows. <laughs> no, I know. But she doesn't. Oh, she didn't use the text that you gave her. She never even no. checked for bugs. No. All right, so you have no idea, Ava. Hmm. Put it I this way. Know. Put it this way. I need to know for information security because nobody likes a body bag being caught on CCTV if you get raided by the FBI. That is a pretty big concern. <laughs> and I'm going to unzip the bag and I'm just going to be like, Ava, can you get them to tell I you... Look, I know we've been through this already. Can you just let us know so we can take care of this? And I'm going to use awe okay. on these guys again. Uh, in case we can see it again. Um, just to see if they can let us know anything about the cameras. Uh, go ahead and make your roll. Manipulation presence. Three. Three. Then they're going to get a roll as well. Same as before for both of them. Oh, shit. That's four. Oh, wow. Five. Six. Two. Uh, one, one of them um, is like, I don't see why not. But the, uh, the one who was at the head carrying it away, uh, he, he kind of cuts him off. He's like, again, none of your fucking business, lady. You're allowed up here because you are who you are, but you ain't, you ain't paying our checks. Hmm. We're just trying to help. But if you're going to be difficult... He, he steps forward. We are helping by cleaning up your mess. If anyone's being difficult, it's the ones making us bring this fucking body back and forth. Are you done? Look, my sister is sorry. But now on CCTV, we have the two of you carrying a body. This is not good for us. It's not good for you. If you want to be caught in this, the evidence is now on CCTV. The first thing you do is you destroy that CCTV from that camera. The second thing we do is to make sure you get this body back after we get rid of the evidence. He, he his gaze, as, as you're talking, Zach, his gaze doesn't leave Ava's the whole time. Yeah. And it's not a pleasant gaze that he's giving Ava. But when you finish, he turns to you. You can trust we'll do what we need to do with what we have. Fine. <sighs> Go do you and destroy the CCTV evidence of this entire event and bring me anyone else who saw it. I'm going to compel. Ooh, all right. Is that a rouse? Uh, yes, I'm using Mesmerize. 
So, uh, rouse button. Bloop. Hunger gain. Take up to two. And what is a opposed roll? Uh, it is opposed by... Wow. Do you want to oppose that? Probably not, but he's going to get a roll. Uh, <laughs> intelligence not resolve. likely going to succeed. <laughs> intelligence resolve? All right. Yep. Poor guy. <laughs> wow. And uh, so... Uh, critical this is, six. <laughs> yeah. It's just a critical success versus a complete and utter failure. Um, blah, blah, blah. No rolls required. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Commanding a resisting victim. Blah, blah, blah. Commands to go against the victim's nature also require. So you're just telling him to get rid of the CCT. Uh, CCTV yeah. And just make come evidence. back. Make sure that anyone who saw it is with you. Uh, he he gives a, a very just kind of a, an affirmative nod. He doesn't actually speak words. Then he leans down to pick up the body and uh, go to zip it back up. Unless you still no need no no, no. I, I need the body. I haven't told him to do that, so I'll keep the body yeah. with me. So he'll stand up and wait. Okay. Um. I, I just look at the others with him because I know that he's going to wait for that. I'm just like, I have to get rid of some incriminating marks. I will move slowly and I'm going to just very slowly pull out a pistol with a silencer on it, pick up a cushion from the sofa, put it up to his neck and just go. So you just blat through the neck? Uh, I'm going to shoot into the neck and down into the torso so the bullet stays inside him because I don't want to mess the room up. So I can't like actually look the wounds now. Too it's late. That's too late. Okay. Okay. So you place a pillow with the silenced pistol up in the neck and you blap twice. Very little blood even stains the pillow and the fleshy bits that fly out are kind of land unceremoniously on his shirt and his body. Again, very little blood even in the body at all. Now you have fleshy bits in this hole uh, in the neck and uh, they both stand there and watch. They look curious. Um, which one of you has my sister's number? They both look at each other. <laughs> oh, that was, number. that was that uh, was that was uh, Bastiano. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm just taking. There you go. Bad, 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 bad. <laughs> okay, which one is that? Is that which, which of the three? He's not uh, here. He's not okay. here. He looks so, around. So Bastiano, did Bastiano see the body? Because there were three of them that saw uh, the body. He did, yes, that's... yes. Right. So there's okay. two down here. The two guys, I took Bastiano out of the room, and these two guys were okay, the ones I asked that were everyone like, who saw the body. the body. So there's just two in here. There's the other one's not here. Yeah, the other one left because okay. she. He's like, here's my place. He okay. he was supposed to go. He was going to inform people about the bite march. She cut him off. Oh, then he went so to go he, do his she's work. meant to go like now. Okay. Unless the two of you also. What, my number? We can arrange that. We can that. make that quicker. I look at the one who isn't compelled right now. Well, they look at each other confused. Like, <laughs> what the fuck is going on? Ava, oh God. quiet for a second. You sit here, call me back with this body, then you blast a hole in this thing. Then this you know what? Let's make this simple. Bastards. Ava, can you go step outside for a moment? I'm dreadfully sorry about this, uh, but Terry. Why do I have to leave? But look, you found the body. There was a bullet hole in oh. the neck. You did what you could. And Ava, yes, I'm rewriting his memory. <laughs> Go roll, baby, roll. Um, you roll, but rewriting both of them? You're gonna have to do it for both. I know, I know. All right, all right. Um, you know Ava what? Ava steps out, do you step out of the room, Ava? Let's let's set the scene here. These two guys are looking like, what the fuck is going on? What is this nonsense? <laughs> now you're offering to sleep with us. Ava, do you, when Zach says step out, do you step out? Yeah, I, I have a feeling I know it's about to happen here, so I Ava step steps out. away. The both of them are, are looking at you, and now they're they're you grab one of theirs attention, you just start to speak at him. Yep. Um I am going to use the thing I've prepared since the beginning of the season, the prepared Vita infusion, which replaces one mm -hmm. rouse check but uses it up. Mm -hmm. I will need to recreate that at some point now. Um and that will forgo the rouse check on the ability, but I still have to make the roll. So we see Zach reach into his pocket and there's a quick snapping there's, motion. Uh, it's actually a necklace. Sash. It's a necklace in the necklace shape of uh, an ankh, and it's slightly red tinted, and you see it just goes ever so slightly silver again, and a little bit of red just sinks into his flesh. Um, and then I need to rewrite the mind. Three successes. This, uh, I can't remember, he doesn't get a uh, He gets to roll if he is um, anticipating or anything like that. For this one, he won't. Uh, okay. He's not anticipating this at all. Uh, you, The thing glows red, but it's super subtle and only the, the audience and the camera can catch the subtle flash. And you lock eyes with him and you say, what? I say, 
You found the body like this, the bullet hole in it. You then took it back and you dealt with it as you could. Um, I just like make I make sure that like you know they found the body like this with no with no fine marks at all, just the the, bite, the bullet wound. That's what they found it like. Okay. And I'm uh, making it so appear to the other one like I'm just briefing him with a set story. And then okay. I just turn to the other one. I say, okay, and you saw the same. What? And then, okay, and then, and yeah, he what looks you at you when you're, when you're doing body, this, and he's like, what are you talking Bullet hole in the neck. You saw nothing untoward rouse in terms check. of wounds. This one needs a rouse check. Oh, God. So much blood. Okay. There you go. Better. And you rewrite his memory as well. Two. I will will pal that if I need to. Uh, you, you, again, he's caught off guard. Um, okay. this, is it minimum three successes or is it? Just no, it's any just any successes. It's just, I know one memory. of them is minimum three. Uh, but he, yeah. So he sits there and as you catch him, you his sentence, what the hell? And his eyes glaze over as you speak. When your words finish, he, uh, blinks a few times as you step back and straighten out your suit. And they seem sufficiently pleased with the situation. They both look to you and they both say, are you done? Can we take this body out of here? Yeah, thank you very much for your service. I'll make sure to pass yeah, on the And he just attention. fucking walks past you. One of them soldiers just brushes up against you purposefully, clearly, to knock you back a half step. And they bend over and zip this thing up. They lift and grunt, and uh, they start walking out the door. You can hear them chattering at the end of the hall, like, what a pain in the ass this is. And they don't get paid enough for this shit. Yada, 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 yada. And they leave. Ava, you see them walk out with the body and leave. And Zach in, uh, shortly follows out the door. Was it... Did it work? Yes. Oh, so Zach. Many notes, so many notes. I am so sorry. I really, like, I know... We can have this conversation after we deal with Bastiano. Okay, okay, okay. Um, I, I have his hotel and everything. Um, I, if you want... I don't know if you want to do what you did with them, or I can just... Where is his hotel? Is it in the rack? Yes. It's in the rack? It's it's a hotel on the rack. A rack is a string of clubs. Uh, it's like okay. a string uh, or block area in Chicago. So there okay. are some hotels nearby and whatnot that, that lay technically within the rack. And technically we're allowed to feed in the rack, right? Hotels right. accounted? Hotels accounted. Sure. It's a little bit harder in a hotel unless you can get to their room quietly, but she got a personal invitation. <clears throat> I know you're hungry. Yes, but I also would prefer to wipe this guy's memory rather than going anywhere further with him maybe blabbing or talking to his colleagues. Right. So, do you want to come with me and take care of it? Yes. All right, we can do that. All right, let's go. Is the plan simply to head in, feed, uh, rewrite his memory, then feed on him, or just feed on him? Um, you know what? Sure. I don't like this guy very much, <laughs> so I'm going to probably want to feed on him if the opportunity arises. Sure. I mean, it, it would simply arise. It doesn't take long. It's a, uh, it's not a, like a rundown, like, bad motel. It's still on the rack where money is flowing, but it is also a cheap, like, Holiday Inn Express style kind of hotel. And you're led to the second floor. There's only two floors to this one. He's one of the rooms on the right-hand side. There is not many people milling around at this hour. It's coming in at like 2 or 3 a.m. And while Chicago is, is a busy city, it does go to sleep eventually. And knocking on the door, a gentle rap, eventually the door cracks open. I imagine Ava is the one that presents herself while Zach stands off to the side. Yep, and as soon yes. as he opens the door, I'm going to be at the crack. Sure, and as soon as he opens the door and maybe sees just a glimpse of Ava, Zach steps into view, catches Step his inside, eye. sit down on the bed, and stay still. Is this uh, just a command? Uh, it's mesmerized, because I don't have the level one command version, so I will have to roll okay. a... Yep, rouse check. Hunger gain. Okay, you gain hunger. You're at, what, three now? Uh, three, yeah. Okay. Uh, you. So, again, that door opens. You can see he's shirtless. Uh, he's well. He's well-built. Uh, he's got a nice six pack and, and big old biceps, but before he can say anything to Ava, Zach comes from the corner, catches his eyes, stand and sit back, sit down and say nothing. The door shuts, you can hear the metal chain unlock, opens again, and he steps, uh, opens the door and walks back quietly and plops himself on, a, on, one, on the chair that is sitting next to his one and only bed with a lamp behind him and the TV running 
uh, local news. I just said sit down in. on the bed. Just on the bed. So he sits at the so, foot of the bed. It's yeah. like right next to the chair. Yeah. Sits down at the foot of the bed, faces you. He is in, like I said, his boxers. And he's got some um, maybe $2 slippers on. He looks over as you walk in. You both shut the door. But he says nothing. Right. Let's make this quick. Um, tonight, uh, you saw a body at a bullet wound in the neck and no untoward marks whatsoever other than that and afterwards you saw a woman who didn't really speak to you very much roll me your ass oh. you're still at three he silently seems to absorb okay and I'm gonna bite him and you go to feed Ooh. you do not need to roll any hunger you're not at four so you feed. You feed two ticks down to bring it to one. You lick the wounds closed because you're not frenzying or, or bestial failing or bestial critting. And he loses himself to ecstasy as you regain your hunger and you lay him gently onto the bed. He'll have a headache and a hangover tomorrow, but he'll be sure. all right. While he's doing that, I'm going to take out the gun that I shot the guy in the neck with mm -hmm. and I'm just going to wipe the grip, put his hand on it, Make sure it gets a little bit of like a fingerprint in there. Make sure his hands are nice and greasy. Um, put that in a pocket in a Ziploc. Uh, I'm going to drop some like calling cards for like escorts next to him on the bed. And then leave. And so we do. Ava, you watched him meticulously, clearly creating evidence to cover your mess. And after a quick feed and a few quick uh, fingerprints gathering and leaving some uh, evidence about the two of you, you leave. This took up Zach. most of the rest of the night. Zach breathes deeply. Technically, I'm still blush of life for the rest of the night. This has been a busy night. <laughs> Tomorrow Zach. is day five, and the day you're supposed to meet the Ventru. Oh, God. While you guys meet the Ventru, I'll be turning myself in. <laughs> okay. <sighs> Look, whatever... Whatever happens to me, I am so sorry, and I'm really grateful to have you as my brother. I and clean up my messes and help me because there's no way I could do this on my own, and I'm really, really sorry. And I know we don't normally do this because we're brother and sister, but I will put it in writing. Whatever you need after this, I will do what I can. I will make this a boon. I know we don't normally do this, but I think for this situation, I will gladly put a major boon out there for this. Fine. Thank you. I, I just... I'm... I'm sorry. And I don't know what's going to happen to me after this. But I need to come clean. I... I, I can't let this... something happen and... Nobody saw you bite him. Everyone who saw the body saw a bullet wound. And this gun camera. is the one that shot him. But the cameras. Deleted footage. Oh, you, you, uh, you, uh, told she, me to he instructed them to. Oh, okay. That's the one thing. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Can you write down, um, you owe your, and your character sheets that you owe Zach a major boon? Yes. I, the major boon. Major is about as high as you can get. That is almost life. He like did a lot. Just so I you understand the that, uh, what he can ask for in terms. Yeah, it's. I breached the masquerade, and he cleaned the entire thing up. So I think this is worthy of uh, a major boon. So. Now the Camarilla will have been informed because there was a code four, and they will know what that means. If they look at the body, they'll also know it lacks a lot of blood. So they are still going to talk to you, but considering the entire thing is relatively clean. You might get away with a slap on the wrist. So, if they talk to me, I should tell them the truth? That Otherwise, then we cleaned I it up. I didn't wipe out memories of you. There were too many people who saw you to do that. So they have seen you. You were there. The camera are definitely going to know that a body was drained of blood and you were there. It's going to be you. What 
everyone else will know is that potentially someone shot someone. And we have a gun with fingerprints if we need it. And I'm going to hand over the gun in the Ziploc bag. Okay. Okay, so I, I will hold on to this, and if they come talking to me, I will explain this situation. I would suggest you probably go to them first, because it will help cut off things. They already have a message sent out to them, which means they'll know relatively soon. But you could send a message and also come talk to the Ventru tomorrow. Okay. I know how good you are at the whole socializing with Ventru thing. <sighs> Alright. I will do that then. I should be able to join you still. Are you going to be picking Dakota up? Um, yes, I, I, I can do that. I just, you know, she might be needed to pick me up. As it's fine. I, I, I'll, I'll be sure to get her. Pick me up at, and I give like a street location, a few streets away from my um, north safe house. Okay. So you separate for the night? Yep, it's the end of the night, so. So the night goes by rather uneventfully. For the rest of the evening, you all find your safe houses and havens and spend the night there. Dakota's was spent being led, shown, and walking back while you had an impromptu mess to clean. As the day passes and the next night rolls around, Rouse checks from all three of you. I'm hungry, pup. Well, so much for that zero hunger. Is Dakota at now? Three again. Three again. <laughs> don't mess in the rack. Don't, I can't do don't this. feed in the rack. <laughs> don't get a do messy critical. <laughs> We're having some feels in here, gang. <laughs> oh, God. I'd, I'd also like to do a quick five minute ritual, if that's okay, when I wake up. Oh, yeah, you can do a five minute ritual. Easy. Yeah, uh, principal infusion of Vitae. I'm going to make another, my ank. Uh, Infuse with yep. blood again. Do you need to roll a rouse check to make that happen? Uh, yes, effectively, I roll the rouse check and You're it allows me to rouse check later. You're basically a rouse check. Effectively, yeah, exactly. if I fail the roll, though, I lose that rouse check entirely, so it kind of... Ooh, interesting. Yeah. Go ahead and make that roll. So, uh, I do gain hunger from it. So, if you failed the rouse check? Uh, yeah, I, it depends if I fail the discipline roll, though. If I fail that, then I lose it. Ah, okay, okay, okay. And three, which is the minimum successes on it. So, yep, pass. You're good. I get my principal and future Vitae back. So, Dakota, you know this is the night where the Thin Bloods are supposed to be collected by the Venture, where the Venture is supposed to meet up with you all in Ollie's bar. And last you heard, they had they had the girl uh, at Ollie's bar to be handed over at that point. Right. That's from, from your understanding. You haven't heard any updates from there. Would that be where you're heading for the night? I imagine three of you would be heading to Ollie's bar, I imagine, for the night. This is the night where the Coterie's job is to be paid. Yes, and I need to beat again, so possible to... You oh, You're in Northerly Isle. Would you like to feed on, uh, what are you looking to feed on? Northerly Isle, you have wildlife. It's a little easier, um, but there are humans around. Wildlife won't sate you as easily. Or you can just right. go to the rack on your way there and just feed on the rack. It's early, so people are going to be filing in. They're not going to be drunk quite yet. Nah, um, I'll probably feed in my territory, so we'll stay in the Northerly Isle. Um, if there are... Mm. I mean, there are people around. It's just not as many of them, you know? It's, it's a late at night in a natural that. area. I know. You could go and hunt some wildlife. That's what I'm thinking. Let's just hunt some wildlife and make this easy because we got business to attend to tonight. Sure. Uh, for that, I'm actually just going to have you uh, roll me a strength plus survival to Interesting. find, find uh, basically find the animal and then just take it down with pure Three strength. successes and a beast. Yep. No, no, it's not beast. You'll fail no beast. Oh, so it's not a You fit. succeed. Yeah, yep. And uh, what are you, are you looking to hunt big game here? Are you looking at taking down like a deer? Or are you oh, looking to snag that, up a is couple that, squirrels? I was supposed to say, is that kind of thing like in this area? Uh, bigger animals, coyotes maybe, you could find some. But I'm just, uh, are you looking for small game or slightly larger game? Probably something larger, I'm at three hunger. Okay, because uh, I mean, at this point, what's your humanity at? Five, right? Four? Four. You're at four, so small animals. Oh shit, 
I think they changed that actually so that blood potency is the one that matters for that and that hunger that uh, humanity doesn't make much of a difference. I think it's blood oh, potency. Oh, that might be I might be thinking a little Yeah, cuz they split rules. them and then make them very distinct. That's right. That's right. That's right. So you can feed on something bigger, bigger game, uh, getting something that'll give you uh, a full dot of hunger instead of a, like a half. And I'm sure I was about to say, and Dakota probably really enjoys the hunt a lot. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it, it's something you engage in quite nicely and you've been using over the course of 10 years when Gangle are willing to hunt with you or sometimes just to hunt on your own or connect yourself with your natural surroundings. Um, so yes, yeah, so you, you may you may set yourself a single point from this coyote. Great. Okay, it's not the worst in the world. I'm feeling somewhat better. And you're going to head to Ollie's bar. And I will head towards Ollie's bar. I can't decide if I ought to take the dogs tonight. I'm feeling saucy about it. No, I'll leave them at home. The other two of you, are you also heading down to Ollie's bar to take care of your obvious basic openings of, of rituals and everybody heads their mm -hmm. way? Okay. Uh, I, I leave a message with one of my contacts as well that I want to buy some stuff. You did also hear, by the way, from... Um, uh, your retainer the other from last night she did not see anything for the remainder of last night and she'll be going there tonight yeah uh eventually you all make your way there first would be those who take cars then those who walk but over the course of the hour the early hours of the evening ollie's bar is a welcoming place and you find yourselves in that familiar brick building with a familiar face sitting behind the bar there grant says uh, stand smiling it's a quiet night tonight only three or four people sitting around, all familiar faces to those who visit this place frequently enough. Grant sees uh, probably Ava and Zach walk in first as they would take a, you know, Ava's chauffeur. Uh, and, and Zach, if he wanted to take his own, he could easily uh, take and call Ava his Ava was car. giving me a lift. Yep, exactly. So the two of you would arrive first and he'd oh, over the bar with a towel over his shoulder. He'd toss it over his shoulder and wave. Hey, good to see your faces again. Can I get you anything? Well. Yeah. Room in the back, has the big guy shown up? Uh, he popped by last night, but he's not here tonight. Okay. Um, we okay to use the back? Yeah, he, she kind of shrugs. I imagine so. So, yeah, both rooms are empty, so take your pick. So you take one of the rooms in the back. Which one do you go to? The one where the girl was held or the one the other one? Oh, I meant the, I meant the, um, like the table with the pull on the curtain. Oh, room. the pull, the private oh, the booth. Yeah, yeah, the private booth. booth. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're welcome to have the private booth. You head over and kind of scoot in, light conversation. If there's something Zach and Ava want to talk about, you may, but if not, we're going to go to Dakota mm -hmm. walking into the bar now. Okay, Dakota. Very shortly thereafter, maybe another 30 or so minutes, your heavy uh, steel-toed boots coming down the concrete steps and the door swings open. Grant gives you a, a politeful smile and nod. He's like, I'd offer you a seat, but your buds are here. Ugh, I don't want to sit in the booth. <sighs> she looks at the inviting her stool, and then she looks at the booth, and she wanders <laughs> over to the booth. <laughs> yep. And uh, there Zach and Ava are with the curtain open. Where's Ollie? Not here. Not here tonight. He walked off after we were done last night. He checked in later with Grant, but he's not around. So what's the plan? It's all done. Everything is fine. There are no issues whatsoever. I look at Ava. Well, that's definitely not fucking true. <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> manipulation plus subterfuges. <laughs> you kind of tried to hide the fact that something went wrong. It's definitely don't believe you. <laughs> Three? Okay. I mean, he says it, whether, whether Dakota fully believes it or not, it's up to Dakota. But as always, Zach says it. Very convincing. He's just, he's always so sure of himself when he speaks. Right. You're Put, confident. Put it this way. Camille got involved. She walked off with one of the children that we needed and the other two. Uh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Camille got involved and took one of, we still have one to give him, right? No, no I didn't even know Camille, Camille was Camille there. Got. What the fuck? <laughs> Camille yeah. was working with the rest of the Ventru Council and took one of the children directly to them. Okay. Well, then you why... get to tell Jackson that in all your surety that he's not going to be pissed off that we don't have what he wants. Jackson asked. asked for Camille to join us last night. Oh, well, then I feel fucking bad. Well, then why do we have to meet with him if he's Camille's already handled it? Don't they communicate? Presumably to say congratulations, thanks for the job, here's a pat on the back, and all the power you could well, ever want. I can tell you that's not going to happen. That he's an sarcasm. asshole. Oh, I can't he, read that. He's a Ventru. That's how they do it. Well... 
That's fine. But at least it's been taken care of. And... I don't really seek his validation, so can I go home now? <laughs> sure, if you want to. We're like, is that... this is done, right? It the won't door really be done until he comes in. But... Mid conversation, <laughs> the door swings open. But you don't see you don't see Jackson. You actually huh. just see the man that followed Jackson around last time by huh. himself. He walks into the bar. He's well dressed in a button down shirt and a tie, no over jacket or anything, and nice khaki pants, very business casual. As he walks in, he pulls a little notebook out of his pocket and has a pen attached to it. He pulls it out, he clicks it open, and he flips open the book as he steps and he looks. Where's the other one? Busy. Hmm. Well, does he have a you did what you were. You do, uh, you do not sense one. Okay. Uh, he looks down to his notebook. Well, it's unfortunate, but the job was done. Uh, Camille returned uh, last evening with the thin blood as promised. Were the others taken care of then? Yes. We will not be having any problems nor hearing from them in the future. No. And is there anything else that we should know from this job that you may have stumbled across that could be useful in our future? To keep our kind safe. Don't believe anything that's a threat to you. Feel free, make me a uh, manipulation plus subterfuge roll. I look really Incredible. hard at Zach. Yeah, me too. I mean, he rolls really, really well. Granted, he's going to have a decent dice pool himself. He's not a schlub, <laughs> but he rolled a single success, which luckily is enough <laughs> for, for you. Uh, and he, he just gives you a very like uh, subtle nod, like, okay, and continues writing. Well, as promised, a boon is offered to the Coterie, and so that boon will be upheld. It is officially noted here in, the, in uh, our records, and he snaps the book shut. But congratulations from Mr. Jackson himself on a job well done and within the time limit as well. Your reputation seemed to uphold. It was a pleasure meeting you, Miss Ava Heloise, Dakota Rain, and Mr. Uh, Zachary Heloise. And should we need anything else in the future and you're all willing to work with us, we'd be happy to employ your services once again. Thank you. He gives you a polite full bow, turns. I stand up, walks. shake his hand. He will. He shakes your hand. Thank you for making it easy to work with you. If we weren't, then we'd have problems. We are no bruja or gangle after all. Give Mr. Jackson our regards. Of course, madam. And he turns and again goes to walk off. And his dress shoes are clacking with the hard wooden floor underneath. The door opens and shuts behind him and he is gone. See, not so bad, Dakota. Did I wake up on the other side of the fucking looking glass? Where? What is going on? What, we're being successful? It's weird. I <laughs> I <know. laughs> now, when this all started, weren't we going to celebrate your new lease of life? I thought we already did that. And now we mm. can't celebrate without Ollie. <sighs> okay, we'll postpone it until another night when Ollie's here as well. <laughs> but I feel that everyone's schedules at the moment are so intermixed that that might take a few weeks. <laughs> Yes, I do actually have some business to attend to tonight, Zach. I have some notes to bring back. So unfortunately, I won't be able to be doing any celebrating tonight. Do you want some company? If you would like to. Sure. Oh. They're after you. It's a second inquisition, <laughs> right? Uh, Dakota starts running! <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> I told you to make sure they <laughs> <laughs> um, did Dakota want to talk to them about uh, her trip out to Little mm. Village, or is she good on that? East Village, rather? No, fuck no. She doesn't want to tell them any of that. That's embarrassing AF. <laughs> no, well, that you, thank I you. I didn't know if you want to tell them that, hey, Rowan was mm. there, by the way. Like, Rowan's good, but that's, you don't have to say shit. <laughs> nope, she does not. Because Actually, at that point... Good point. I forgot Dakota wasn't here the entirety of yesterday when we were meant to be doing stuff as a team. <laughs> okay, so I'm going home now, okay, bye. <laughs> where were you yesterday? We were meant to be getting these children for the Ventru and you left me and Ollie a little bit in the lurch. I was bored. <laughs> I'm a manipulation subterfuge. That's not a lie! I was, in fact, bored. With, you were, with the in fact, around. bored. Yes, it's not a lie. It's a deception. <laughs> Yeah. And from my subterfuge. And from my it's manipulation plus uh, plus subterfuge. Okay, and hang from on. From my point of view, the Jedi are evil, so <laughs> I guess that's true. Um, I feel like I have. Um, oh no, that's just if somebody's trying to sway, not if somebody's trying to read. Right, you're you're the one right. trying to sway. Y yeah. Oh, uh, what am I rolling? I'm sorry again, <laughs> this... Manipulation subterfuge, as you like. Uh, 
I think that's two dice total for you. Yeah. It's okay. My insight isn't very good either. <laughs> two dice. It's okay. My insight how, is pretty have, terrible. Well, let's see what happens. Cause she you could, know what? She could... I'm going to rouse. Can I rouse? <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, you're you well. I'm going to yeah, rouse. You'll... Oh, yes. Okay, fantastic. So you, I'm going to rouse. One. Yeah, okay. Plus let's try. <laughs> <laughs> as you as you as you hearken the power of the blood and thicken it, it's, it's power to make your words. Oh, a success! Uh, I mean, for you, uh, you can well, you welcome to roll me your wits plus insight, sir. You know, what? I'm gonna rouse. No! Why not? <laughs> Bring it. No, no. Get your get your plus one. I need to drink. Was it worth it? Six messy critical. <laughs> <laughs> oh my I'm god. Like, so guilty. No. I'm I so guilty. I, so wow. here's what happens. Well, she goes, no, no, I was bored. I was bored. Thank I'm, you no uh, better. Uh, Not only that, it's infuriating that she still lies to you. Ten years on, and she still can't tell you the truth and doesn't trust you. I'm, I'm going to willpower you know. to get rid of that ten. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, all right. I, oh, Matt said something I'm good sorry. there. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, there's going to be a roll. There wasn't going to be oh. a, an instant. Yeah, no, no. Zach, Zach is very controlled about his nature, so it makes sense. He's going to hold that back. Um, I only get, like, three successes. There's a minute you feel your chest thump. You feel the rage inside as you realize she's hiding something and she still hides. And as it reaches out and begs to be released, to crash through your ribs and let it, your true nature take hold. No, no, it's, no, it's not my true nature. It's not my true nature. There's a moment. Keep the cage locked. For now. <laughs> Aether, can I meet you at the car? I, I... I can't be present for this? What's... Well, apparently, I have some personal information to discuss about the thing that happened three nights, four nights ago, five nights ago, five nights ago. Five nights ago. How much willpower do you have left, by the way, sir? Uh, f I believe four points. I rerolled four two, points right? left. Yeah. It might I might have not marked keep, down one track. from very early on. I think it's at least th it might be three or four. Um, but I've got six willpower normally, so I've got pretty high will. Okay. Uh, you keep know what? Mark for me. Yeah. Fine. If you if you must, I will be waiting outside. And I'll come with you in a second. Ava leaves. Grant smiles as you go, giving you one last smile. He always smiles when you enter and leave. But continues going back to serving the few patrons that are sitting around. Dakota on one side of this private booth, and Zach on the opposite. Dakota, over the last few nights, I've shot children to save this coterie. I've covered up for uh, other people's problems, and I've helped out people where necessary. Now, whatever you're, it is you're hiding, it's obviously I'm a problem. I'm not hiding anything. And the shit that we were having to discuss last night that happened, the night before last night, is messy to say the least. Is there anything going on that I should know about? Nope. Okay. Nope. Well, you're lying to me? Fine. <sighs> I'm not entirely lying to you. Not entirely lying, okay. You're subterfuging, deceiving. I'm just withholding the stuff that's not important. Okay. It sounds important. It's not. It's not. It's mine to deal with. And, and you know, when you get brought into my shit, then it becomes a problem. So let me do you a favor, Zach, and offer you a mess you don't have to worry about cleaning up. Ah. Dakota, <clears throat> your messes can spread. Everyone in this coterie has a habit of having their messes just spread, and that's because that happens because we're kindred. Then let me leave the coterie out of it. Dakota, 
What? Yesterday you went missing to deal with whatever it is your mess is. No, no, no. When me and Ollie could have done with your help. With them. My help? What did you want me to do? Stand around and wait for you to tell me what to do? I had oh. something else I needed to fucking deal with. I suspected that you and Ollie had it under control, and if I had stuck my nose where it didn't belong, I had a feeling the two of you would ask me to piss off. So I wouldn't handle something else. Considering that we've been working with you for the last five nights, and then you disappear one night saying, oh, I'm sure you've got it under control, you'd ask me to piss off. If you just want to say, I'm not telling you I don't care about this coterie, then the door's right there. But if you're going to stay a part of this coterie, don't give me shit like that. I told you. I saw Rowan. And? I saw him, and I needed to find out if it was true or not. So you went to investigate what's going on with Rowan? Yes. And what did you see? That Rowan is where he's supposed to be. Right. The camera will have Rowan locked down pretty tight. How did you find him? I... haven't spent my ten years with my thumb up my ass. I, too, have ways of getting what I need. Insight roll. I don't know what you're inciting. Me either. I want to know how she found Rowan because the camera will have him locked down tight. That's one of the things I asked in my 10 years. I said, you know, how is it we check on Rowan? And it's, he's locked down tight as fuck. <clears throat> I mean, you could wit's insight. She's clearly knows. I mean, you know, she got, she, she's telling the truth. She, you know, she saw him, how she got there, how oh, yeah. she knows, who knows? You can't, can't quite get. Okay, I was more like, is that, that something but... she's awkward about? Like, did she do something untoward to find that out? Because I know uh... the only way to really get to Rowan, at least from what I was knowing, was going through the Camarilla. But she if, she's, if she's been checking Rowan for the last 10 years, that's also information I'd want to know. But if I couldn't roll on that, that's fine. I won't roll on it. She didn't. Uh, at least I don't think... Uh, it. However she got there last night, you're not sure. Okay. If you believe that the only way she could have gotten there is via the camera, law, then it would make sense that. Well, it's the easiest method, but the other method is she's been watching for ten years, which is also interesting. No, yeah, she. Uh, there's. I don't think there's anything to insight here. She's just keep. She's yeah. staying vague, and whether Zach believes her or not is up to Zach. You don't have to. There's no mechanical benefit to rolling. So there's a tense silence between the two of you. So information. Are we done here? Did you get what you needed? No, I got nothing. And I'm pretty sure the rest of the Coterie got nothing. Something's obviously going on with you, Dakota. And it involves the rest of the Coterie and it involves Ollie. It does not. It does not involve Ollie. It does not involve the rest of the Coterie. And it involves his son directly. I believe I saw Rowan. I don't yeah. have answers for you, Zach. I, 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 I am literally in the middle of an investigation. So if you're looking for an answer that has a bow on top, I don't have it for you. <sighs> No. I don't know what I saw. I am trying to figure that out. But I'm telling you, everything tells me that I saw Rowan. I saw him. Tattoos, shaved head, fucking gun against a thin blood. I saw him. Okay, and I don't necessarily instantly disbelieve you. We've seen weirder things. But you running off and not talking to any of us is very strange when you could have simply talked to us. I had shit to do. You had shit to do. What do you want me to say? I'm we sorry. We all had I shit didn't to do. Then let me do my shit. I'm not trying to tell you that what you did was wrong. That you should have followed me to go look into this before we dealt with a thin blood issue. I let you deal with the things you're great at. And I didn't try to fucking stop you or stand in the way of it. The thin blood issue was just as much your issue as any of ours. And you just left to go follow up an investigation of your own without talking to us. That doesn't seem like you want I us involved. I don't answer to you. 
Zack. No, you don't answer to the coterie, which means you're not part of it. Make a decision, choose a side. I walk out. So he stands and leaves, and you watch him walk out the front door. Does Dakota do anything? No, hell no. I don't know Zack shit. He leaves. A minor boon, Rewind. actually. Yes, but you haven't asked for it, sir. No. Rewind a little bit. Ava's standing on the street corner. You're waiting. There's conversation. People are milling about, but it seems to be mostly just the homeless that surround Ollie's bar. One jingling a coin can't, can hear, and you can hear some conversation, and maybe even the flicker of a fire out of an oil barrel somewhere in an alley down a block or two. But as those minutes pass, eventually you hear footsteps approach, and Dakota, uh, uh, rather Ava, as she smiles and looks to her left, to where the footsteps are. A large figure is striding toward her. A familiar figure of the bald head and stoic face of the Chicago Sheriff. He strides towards you patiently. His eyes lock with yours, but he shows no sign of care, nor anger. There is nothing. He approaches until about a foot away, staying rather close. You know why I'm here. I smile a little bit. You here for your pup? I'm here for the slut. You gonna fuck your way out of this one too. Oh, shut up. I don't even wanna hear it. Let's just go. He steps, he steps incredibly close when you say, oh, shut up. My words are those of the prince. And you have broken the traditions. And if I am lucky, I will get my hands on you a second time. Do you wish to speak more words? I have the power to dole out punishment now. If you want to push that line, bitch. Ava just stares at him. Doesn't say anything. Just stares into his eyes. And his lock with yours. And there is a long standoff. Long enough for Zack to eventually stroll out. You see the sheriff inches from your sister. She looks up to him and he looks down to her. His eyes don't break gaze. Stay out of it. What's his name? Out of curiosity, we have his name. I don't have it written down. Yep. Hodges? Uh, Hodges? Hodges. Yep, Sheriff Hodges. What would be the formal yeah. way of talking to him? Would it be Sheriff Hodges? Or is there a yep. more formal title? Or call him Sheriff. Okay. Just Sheriff will do. Or is that like a shortened form of the formal? I just want to make sure I know what the exact formal is. He, he says stay out of it to you. If you say words. I will approach within like a respectful distance keeping. Make sure I'm like two arms length away or something. With respect, Sheriff Hodges, I was witness to what happened last night, and I think that I may be of use to the Camarilla. The prince summoned her. Did the prince forbear me from coming with her? The prince summoned Ava Heloise. I do not remember hearing her summon a Zachary Heloise either. If your presence is required or requested, then the prince will speak it. Come with me. And he just looks to Ava and starts walking. Mm. I turn to Ava. If my presence is required, I will be at the ground floor of the ivory tower. If I, I was going to say, that would, yeah. Mm -hmm. That would be best. You're walked about a block away where a motorcycle waits. He sits over it. You join him. It roars to life. Dakota, you can actually hear distant motorcycle roar up as maybe you're grabbing your booth and it goes distant. It's late, kind of strange. Zach, do you have uh, Ava's chauffeur take you to the ivory tower since the yeah, chauffeur, chauffeur will be around? is still like sticking around, which I assume he would be here because we only meant to be here quickly. Mm -hmm. I'd pop over to the chauffeur and just get in and be like, ivory tower. She just nods. Dakota, do you do anything or do you stay in the bar? 
uh, the motorcycle is it recognizable? Is really the question. Mm. No, I mean it's a motorcycle. It's a motorcycle late at night. Um, it's not necessarily recognizable. It's just <laughs> That's what I thought. hearing yeah, okay. hearing a motorcycle out here at this hour is is. Once I long. feel like Zach is gone, I would leave. Mm -hmm. um, Where would you go? Probably back home. I don't want to stay in Head this back? area. Ollie's not here. Yeah. Um. So I'd probably go home unless there was somebody to feed on, where I could uh, satiate. You, the could, rest you, of the you can make a roll. Yep, you can make a roll. Okay. Uh, okay. Make your alley cat roll on your way in. Uh, you can is, you could do you it out here. Strength brawl. It's the mm -hmm. plus one to feeding rolls in the, um, in, in the, the bar. bar alone. Yep. While you're in the actual bar. Oh. Messy critical eight successes. <sighs> no, it's messy. No, <sighs> you've got willpower. Wait, no, you got willpower. You can reroll oh, that dice. I do you don't have, want to I do it. I do have willpower. Do it, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. I can. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you guys have been rolling really good hunger dice numbers so for what, some that's reason. Three d ten. You can uh, roll no, up to 3d10, but you can literally spend a re willpower and reroll yeah, that one. You can one choose 10. to just reroll the 10, otherwise. Okay, you'd be that's wrong. all I care about. Okay, otherwise just you increase the one your 10. chance of rolling more 10s. So that is. Okay, it's just a regular uh, six. six. It's not. It's not a critical. So it's yeah. not a critical. It's just a. It's just a, a critical with the beast, technically. Right. Um, and you feed. You find somebody just off in an alleyway somewhere, a couple blocks away. Technically, it's not within. Um, it's not within uh, what's his uh, Ollie's you know, domain, but it's south enough where it borders the Anarchs enough where it could be argued one way or another if a body is right. ever found. And you can feed yourself down to one hunger again, and you will begin to head home. Um, actually, uh, is there is there a library? There's got to be a library in that area, like my home area. I mean, Something. there there's like definitely a, a library one? nearby that you could go to. There's a few. There's a couple. Okay. Uh, little ones. Do you, is there? Are you uh, looking for anything? In the one closest to my haven, whatever one the mm -hmm. closest to my haven, which is probably my regular hit. Um, mm -hmm. I'm gonna drop by a late night library check in. Okay. I have. I have. I has plans. Okay. We will get to your library break in slash check in uh, in a moment. Break in might be the wrong term, depending. <laughs> but first, we go to Ava, who is eventually brought to the back end of the ivory tower, led in through the back door through uh down actually a couple levels in the basement then an elevator up and after waiting and waiting and waiting in the common room eventually ava's number is called and you are brought to the 35th floor two double doors swing wide and on the inside lined with personal security milling about is princess bella in a gorgeous emerald green dress. The way the light hits her uh, it reveals a sort of shimmer that happens on the dress. It's entrancing, it's mesmerizing. It dances in the light in a almost choreographed way. She doesn't even look up when you step in as you step forward. Security guards both step in front of you and check you for weapons. Make sure you are clean completely. And if you are carrying anything, it is removed from you and placed gently elsewhere for you to collect when you are done. Eventually, you're led forward. She's discussing something with a figure or a person you've never seen before, and they seem to finish conversation before he steps back. She looks over, sees you, and smiles widely. Miss Ava Heloise, it has been a very, very long time, and unfortunately, it seems we're not meeting under the most ideal of circumstances. Yes, my prince. You look beautiful as ever. That dress is stunning. She looks down and brings her hands out and gives her gives a little twirl as the, the, the dress spins. And then as she stops, it catches her legs and bounces back, has a nice, uh, again, it, with the light catching it all, it's just a glorious shimmer throughout. She's like, thank you. I picked it out um, just a month or so ago, my first time wearing it. I say that not just for flatteries, but from Clan Toreador to Toreador, it's ah, it's always been it's always nice to be complimented by another rose, as wilted <laughs> as they may be. So I say, uh, Heloise, it has come to my attention that a corpse was found in one of my favorite clubs on the rack. There were yes. no bite marks, but there was unfortunately a pistol shot through the neck. What stands to reason for me, however, is the information that it was a bloodless corpse. One thing leads to another, and it's unfortunate that things went down as they did. However, credit what credit is due, the cover job was excellent. 
those that I'm aware of who saw it seem to have lost most of the details. They're not entirely sure what happened or why, just that there was some bad business dealings. And when they went to go look for evidence on the cameras, it was all gone. All gone. So, whether you or someone you know, or just your way with words, were able to take care of such things. Well, let's say it's made tonight a little bit less dangerous for you. However, you still fed and unfortunately killed. The feeding obviously is not a masquerade breach in any way. You fed on the rack and you found a private place to do it. But you took a kine from the herd. And when a kind goes missing, many different things have to start spinning into action. Gears have to be oiled. And people have to forget willingly or forcefully who he was or what happened to him. Stories need to be told. I think you would know how this goes. Yes. We can't risk rumors and whatnot, especially with the Second Inquisition being as prevalent as they are. So, While I have no intent of killing you this this evening, nor stripping you of any real power, again, the cover-up was magnificent. A lesson still must be learned. And she looks over and gives a nod and a couple of security walk out. And out comes, eventually, a few minutes later, the body bag. The pl- body bag is placed gently on the floor, and she uh, sh- uh, shoes away the guards, and they stand and militarily stand off to the side. She gestures down to you. Please, unzip it. I just very gently... Oh! As you do, the body is there. The one with the pistol blast in the neck and skin bits of, of, of himself still laying around. But just, you see the tissue and the muscle and the bone, but no blood. His eyes are open, just staring up. Just yesterday, you were talking about wonderful photography. I need to get rid of this body. Now, I have my ways, and it would be really easy to do it, but instead, a Toreador must do something on Toreador-like. For the rest of this evening, and however many nights it takes, I'm going to sit there, and she points to her chair in front of the fireplace. Guards will stand around, and until that body is missing, we will eat every bit of it as you will and as you are as messy as it takes but you are going to take care of the evidence personally and you will do so on your hands and knees on the ground and everyone here will be witness to your actions and when I am satisfied Ava's face at that point just goes from like just horrified in that moment just from smiling conversing with the prince to oh god okay perhaps next time the urge to devour a human and its very life essence crosses your path in your mind will remember how you have to remove that body should you breach the masquerade again and think twice it isn't becoming of a Toreador to slaughter her creatures. And now, we must do the most un like action. Get to cleaning. And she sits back. She snaps her fingers and a ghoul ushers out with a bottle of wine and places a single glass on her table. She has a book. She pops it open. She begins to read. How long does it take before Ava tries? It is going to take some time. Uh, Ava stands there just flabbergasted for a moment, not even sure. There are no bone cutting saws if you look around and no tools. She has given you no way to take care of this thing beyond your hands and your mouth. (sighs) Oh my gosh. Um, well, I'm just gonna get 
eventually she'll stand there for a moment shocked eventually she'll Ava will go over to the body lay down on her knees look at it start taking the clothes off and just stare at it the shirt a single button at a time the shirt bears a pale bloodless chest that is cold to the touch god Oh God! Um, <laughs> um. Okay. Well, I'm just gonna. Just stare at it and try. In, and in real time, these minutes pass. There yes. is exasperated sighs, and uh, there is even um, maybe even a. Disgusting breaths that just, as you realize the the weight of what you have to do, and you actually hear the lightest giggle come from Bella. Disgust and humiliation at the same time. Eventually, you've taken a good five or ten minutes, and the doors open. In walks the sheriff. Oh no! The door oh, shuts. No. And she's like, ah, oh, my guest. He Don't stands and walks over to. He walks over to the prince and stands behind her. Sheriff Hodges does enjoy a good show. Oh, God. We can make does... this a single night's task, Miss Ava, or we can do this over the course of a week. However long it takes, you will not be leaving the Ivory Tower. Well, if he's going to be here, it's going to be a long week. I'm sorry. <clears throat> I'm dragging this shit out. She simply responds, <laughs> we do... We do have an eternity after all. All right. Well, I can probably, well, actually it doesn't really matter because I'm a vampire. I was like, I can only stomach so much, but no. <laughs> there are bits really... of flesh that loosely dangle from the wound that your brother put in. We'll start with the flesh Is that's that what already we'd like out. To do, to start yes. with the flesh. And so we're gonna do like little pieces at a time, really. Sure, 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 sure. Eventually you take little pieces here and there and those little pieces are very easy. They're not connected to him in any way. And there's still a little blood on them, even though it's been, uh, you know, days old at this point, there's still a little bit of a taste that you recognize and slightly enjoy. But the taste of flesh itself tastes like dirt, nothing. It is just plain in your mouth and you chew on it as there's a chewiness and occasional crunch as you hit uh, tissue and sinew oh, and you God. swallow what you can, but there's only a few little bits that are loose. Very quickly, Ava has to make a decision. She has to pull apart pieces of the body. And I do wish to know where Ava does start. Uh, I am not... Oh, I don't need no. details. I don't need details. I just I need know. to know where you're No, no, begin. no. I'm thinking, like, I was like, I don't think I'm going to go for the head first because it's just, oh, God, this is brutal. We're going to go for the big, meaty pieces, the chest, the arms. I don't know how the hell we're going to do the rest. So you go for the arm and you lift the arm gingerly by a cut by the uh, palm and it's heavy, but you're a kindred and it's limply dangling from your grip. There's no clear place to do to, to here. And while you are kindred and you have fangs, they are not meant for ripping chunks of flesh off. It would be most of your molars and your front teeth that do majority of the piercing. Do you just go to take a chunk out of the arm? Yeah. And so maybe she, even closing her eyes, she brings it close, getting to the fattier, fleshier bit of the arm and you bite. And you bite with this all your strength as much as you can. Your fangs simp uh, sink in simply, but it's when it meets the bluntness of your front and bottom teeth and even some of your incisors, that's where the, the real difficulty is. And you have to actually put effort to ripping this flesh off. Strength plus brawl, please. Oh, God. Oh, this is not going to be good. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. And I apologize <laughs> for dragging this all on everybody. I, it's... But, this you is pierce important the flesh, for my character. And it, you can actually feel your, your molars and, and your uh, front teeth and such sink past it now. It's not that hard, actually. And you can actually taste a little bit of the coagulated juices that have sat underneath the epidermis for so long. And you go to rip, 
when you can taste the rotting flesh, it started to go bad. Composure plus resolve to not immediately gag. Yep. Let's... Okay, Ava's got a strong gag reflex. (laughs) 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 I might have to use... Oh, God. Okay. You've never eaten flesh like this before. It's never crossed your mind, nor have you ever needed it. The only thing you desire is the lifeblood itself. So when the flesh hits, there's a moment she tries to convince herself it's something else. Maybe it's a, a, a steak. You do blush of life when you can to imbibe, and it wouldn't be the first time, but it's mind over matter, and you can't get past the sight, because even if you open your eyes a second, this dead-eyed corpse staring up with his arm being held is in your mouth as you tear off the, pers- the first piece of flesh, and you can feel yourself ready to gag. Would you all over him, or would you turn your head as fast as you can? They do not provide you a bucket. They do not provide you anything. I will turn my head and try not to let them see. And so, uh, dexterity plus athletics check. Yep. <laughs> yeah, Zach's in the lobby hanging out. Yeah, Zach's just, just doing like, this in the lobby. Yeah, I wonder like... what's going on. <laughs> That's two success. Two successes. You're able to move your head in time and you wretch everything that you've put down. It's at that moment you realize, unless you blush of life, every hour or so, this is all coming back up. Oh, God. I can only blush of life so many times. So You don't have to. I'm just saying, you're going to have to deal with the vomiting as you devour it over the course of time. Oh, God. I'll... For now, I will deal with the vomiting, but... And so you get to work. And you eat, and you eat, and you eat, slowly. Is your goal to try and finish this thing in the course of 12 hours over the night? Uh, Let's, uh, no, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna drag it out for a full week, as dramatic as that is, Um, but I am gonna, they're making me do this, I'm gonna try to take my time. And if I can't do it all in one night, then we'll be here for another night, so maybe two nights of me trying to take care of this thing. Because I just, I don't, I can't see Ava having the will to eat yeah. this entire thing in one night, honestly. Sure. And so you take as much time as possible. The first night, it's not gonna be easy. You're not gonna be able to finish this. And so Zach, you're left in the ivory tower lobby the whole night. Um, you eventually just head to the nearest haven and come back the next night and just patiently wait. Out of interest, uh, is there any way that, like, because I know people can get, like, um, apartments and stuff in the top of the ivory tower. Is there any way to, like, rent an apartment or something without uh, when... extreme permissions or anything l- low Zach... down or somewhere? Might Are you, like, looking for just a place to stay for the night? Ideally, <laughs> but I ideally want to be, like, right on hand. Yeah, so they they have... Uh, sorry, go ahead, Ava. I was going to say, he probably has access to my haven as well. It's not like I keep they, it... They, I, I was going to say, you have two options. If Ava has given you permission to use her haven as, as willed. You have her haven literally up 10, like 20 floors. Also, alternatively, you know there where Ollie was kept last season. He was kept in like Wallace prisons downstairs. If you asked to be thrown in one of those prisons, not like as a prisoner, but like, hey, could I just have one of these? I mean, you're known around here. You've done good work. It's it's not out of the question for them to give you that place for uh, a number night. And- I, as much as I'd be tempted to use Ava's, um, I know that that was gifted to her by the prince for her use, and that me using it right now might rub people the wrong way or something. Sure, like sure, it probably sure, wouldn't sure. be wrong, but it would rub people the wrong way. So like Zach's just gonna walk down to the holding cells and just say, "Can I just borrow one?" There's a little bit of conversation and there's some, uh, you know, confirming with upstairs of whether they're not, but once they know who you are and uh, they they will uh, happily allow you to spend a night in a prison cell. Yeah, I will spend so a you night do. in a prison cell. Dakota, you have a very nice night with your pups on your boat. A quiet <laughs> night. Nobody comes to get you. No, you go to the library. My That's apologies. right, yeah. I, I can have the forgot. quiet time after the so, library. We go over now to Dakota. There is a local library, um, about a 20 to 30 minute walk from the docks. It's not huge, it's a single floor, but it's got a good selection of books, things that are both fiction and non-fiction. It's a place you visit quite frequently, actually, and there's a custodian that actually works at night that you've slowly befriended over the course of time. Not to uh, retain her or anything like that, but she's an elderly woman, 
Um, as after how much so conversation you had, she's 67 years old. And in her retirement, she got bored and this place needed a, a little extra help at night. And she's always been a bit of a night owl. So she took it up and the two of you have chatted. And should you show up on a night where she's there, she happily lets you in. She feels as though she's helping the youth when she lets a homeless girl like you in. Oh, woman. Uh, yeah, and so you I arrive would, and yeah, her name uh, yeah. is Eleanor. And yep. uh, when do you knock? You, do you? How would you? How would you approach? If, if you see I the actually, lights are on, you see a figure mopping some of the floors, or maybe organizing some books. Right. I usually, I would think that Dakota would not go to the front. She'd probably go to the back door, and like okay. knock uh, to be let in the back. And so this uh, particular library is a uh, is it's a local library, but it's actually got a name to it. It's not owned by the government. It's like a private library. Oh. And it's called uh, Dog Eared. <laughs> I love that. And you knock in the back door and there's some time. Eventually you hear some shuffling. You hear the of a, of a deadbolt and then the unchaining of the other one. She opens the door and she doesn't even peek through. She just opens it wide as though she knows it's going to be you. And she smiles. Hey, baby girl, come on in. Uh, yeah, I kind of look around and make sure nobody sees me. Um, and I, I go in and- What's awareness? If, you, if you're doing a quick check, you feel free. Yeah, I, I want to make sure I'm not being followed always. Um. <clears throat> <laughs> Would you like to re-roll the zero? No, no. <laughs> it's a messy critical on okay. this awareness. You're good. You don't see anybody okay. at all. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, I enter. The first thing I say is, I, I, I need help uh, looking up, looking up something. Oh, and she, as you walk in, she she gives you a quick hug with one hand, and then behind you shuts the door and locks it. Uh, she's like, Yeah, whatever you need. Well, well, first of all, I haven't seen you in a, in a few in a few weeks. How you been? Uh, um, I've read all those books you gave me. And I see you didn't bring them back. Did we I, forget? I forgot. You're so forgetful. I know. I'm sorry. Right. Well, I can't let you take out any other books right now until you bring them back because they're starting to ask questions. And, um, well, the only right. other one who has any access to these are me. So I don't want right. to rat you out. But, uh, you can read here all, all, all night long as long as I'm here. Okay. Uh, do you have a religion section? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she actually walks over and there's little signs that are handwritten on little pieces of paper behind some laminate uh, above a lot of the bookcases. And you see uh, on one side, true crime, and then you see uh, games, and then you see history. And then right next to that on the other, uh, at the corner, uh, you see mysticism and spirituality. And she points She's like yeah. that way. Yeah, over there. Yeah. I didn't um, know we lo we turning we turning to God. And she smiles. <laughs> no. Uh just you know uh curious i have a friend who is and i would like to be able to understand them better well you can't go wrong with the bible sure. a good start and she yeah. she said have you have we read the bible yeah a long time ago no i'm looking for something a bit more tied to like the symbolism in christianity you know crosses mm. and, and 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 tattoos so maybe. you're looking for tattoos? some the theological uh, studies. Sure, sure, sure. And she, yeah. she walks over and while she's not a professional, this library is small enough where at the very least getting you to the general section uh, of where these books are is super simple. So she walks you over to the back corner and you can see like uh, books on all varying religions over here. Uh, Islam and, and Buddhism and Taoism and all, all kinds of different things. Uh, Judaism and then Christianity. She looks up, she's like, there's a Bible. There's like a King James version of the Bible and there's a couple other ones. Right. And then uh, down the shelf, she's like, well, she's like, looks like the only book we got here is she pulls it out uh, and it's literally simply called, called Theology and You. And it, she opens uh... the books and there's some basic explanations here of like, okay crosses and the history of the crosses and, like, okay. and that kind of thing. She's like, I mean, it might not be that detailed, but you, you're probably going to want to head down to downtown if you want, you know, more of a selection. We've only got a limited amount here. So if you want to, and she kind of hands you the book, go through this for a bit, feel free. But uh, again, I can't let you take it out of here till you bring some of the other ones. Right, right. I won't take it. Uh, qu uh, question, does your fancy computer look at what the other libraries have? And she looks over and what you see is like an old CRT monitor <laughs> and like an old gateway, like and we're not even talking a horizontal tower. It's right, flat, yeah. Uh, I'm not vertical tower. You're talking like a horizontal thing that the, the monitor is set, on, set on, type, uh, on top of. And the keyboard is like an old wired keyboard. And she, she looks like, I'm gonna be real with you, baby. I don't know shit about technology. 
And she laughs. Me neither. <laughs> and I laugh too. I'm like, okay, that, that, that's okay. That's helpful. Um, another question. You're you're smart. You've read all these books, right? <laughs> Not even close. Oh. But well, I've read a few. Well, I I was wondering, is there like, you know, spirituality or mysticism stuff around duality, or like? two versions of oneself or uh, well the yin she she goes well this yin yin and yang you know the, the dark yeah. and the light oh. along those sides and and uh, uh, you know a lot of of the bible is parables of of old oh, light overcoming dark a lot of the stories in the bible are just especially the old testament are more more lessons and examples so that they're all if you read the bible with that in mind at least what if we testament. what if we step out of the Bible for a second and and so just... then then we're entering territory I'm not familiar with, but I'll try, baby. Okay, okay, okay. Which worries Dakota Smidge now knowing <laughs> this woman is clearly very much a Christian. Um, well, uh, at least very least that's all she knows. At least that's all she knows. Um, more maybe conspiracy theory or you know like like Nessie level shit. Like if I were to be an exact replica of myself or cloning. Do you have books on cloning? <laughs> Dakota's yeah. like tossing out everything she can think she, of. She looks, but this woman is eating it up. She leans in and her eyes are wide. She's like, I think I read about that in one of the books. Uh, I think it's uh, Doppelgrangers. Yes, right? I've heard about those. Oh, Doppelgrain. Uh, she gets up and she heads back over to the, the religious area, but in the other side of the corner where the mysticism is. Yeah. And she okay. starts pulling out like random books and she's got like five or six. She's like, I think it was one of these. And she kind of just kind of tosses them on, on the table. And it's like, yeah. the US is top 50 conspiracies and uh, spirituality. Are you who you think you are? Like those kinds of things. And they're just <laughs> kind of piled on top. Yeah. Dakota's like, this is, this is so perfect. Thank you, Miss Eleanor. I'm going to, um, I'm gonna read. Will you be around if I have a problem with a word or something? Oh, of course. She she just gives you she just gives you a gentle smack on the arm. She's like, "What do you think?" And she gets up okay. and she just starts to go back to cleaning. Okay. All right. Dakota's, so Dakota's gonna Dakota start herself. digging. Yeah. And research. Digging. So we'll have a few rolls for you. Um, oh God, can I get? Uh, well, you know, you're reading. You can read now, which is always good. I can. Um, as a plus. <laughs> do you have any? In, uh, what's? Let me look at your character sheet. So I did not take ac I have. You don't have academics. Um, it's fine. You're gonna go read. But we're basically what we're gonna say is, uh, do you plan on taking these home at any point? Um, what I would probably like to do is I'm going through these to look to see if any of the crosses or the symbols that he had on him match. Like, could I could I, could I locate a church? Like, if I'm beginning to think that he is this like society of Leopold is around, okay. then maybe attached so you're to a religious if, organization. You're trying to see if any of his his tattoos maybe match any artwork. That you yeah. see in these books. Yeah, artwork okay, that we cool. see in the book. And then I'm looking for any kind of um, paying to the idea of like duplicate or splitting somebody or uh, the duality of life, like these kind of things. Okay. I would like to take books, but only maybe if I she mean, like, falls always... asleep. Yeah, so you could always you just know? pocket them without telling her. Yeah, probably. Well, we're going to say like the, the kinds of things you're looking for. Dakota can read, but she's one, not a fast reader. And two, because of her academics and you know skills of being low, comprehension is hard. So it takes her a while to just work through books. Yes. So we're gonna say these books. She's you're easily gonna be able to slip out without her noticing at some point. Okay, you can great. easily take these books home. So over the course of many nights, you're gonna slowly start going through them, and we'll talk about uh, either in the next episode or between episodes or when next episode you're on, we discuss what you do. But Dakota disappears into her boat with literal like six books that she plans on working through. <laughs> The That's next fun. night, Ava continues to eat. And over the course of that, Dakota is called there as well. Oh, my God. Zach, you see Dakota walk, walk in, uh, but with other, uh, what well, you recognize one of them at the very least is another hound. And then um, another, another one that you don't recognize, clearly Kindred. They walk by you. She's like 20 feet away. It's a big common area. You're mm -hmm. kind of sitting in one of the waiting booths. Um, Dakota, you will, you see, as you look around, you see Zach sitting like 20 feet away, just kind of waiting. I'll, I'll like, like you... stand up and like, like nod Dakota and like indicate like if she has a second, I'd want to talk, but otherwise I know she's busy. Does it look like they're leading us straight in? Oh yeah, you're, you're, there's not even like a stall. You're, you're walking right by the desk. You know what? And considering Zach was kind of an asshole the last time I saw him, I think Dakota's going to look at him and turn her head and keep walking. And so she does. 
Eventually, you are then brought to an elevator and the floors tick by. They didn't tell you why they're bringing you, only that you've been summoned to the ivory tower. And eventually, the elevator dings on the 35th floor. You haven't seen the prince in a very, very, very long time. And you know what this is. And you're let out, the hounds do not follow you, and the elevator doors slide closed before you, behind you, rather. And the hounds disappear. There were the other two hounds, by the way. And then the double doors open as personal security then takes over for here. And the sight you see might be shocking. It is five or six personal security. And over by the fireplace in the chair that she always taught you to read from sits Bella, tonight in a gorgeous red dress. And behind her, standing stoically with his arms crossed, is the sheriff. But it isn't them that catch your eye. It's what's in the center of the room. A bloodied, messy Ava in her clothes from two nights ago, punched over a... what remains maybe of a corpse. There's an arm down to its bone, flesh scattered on the ground, pieces of the bone separated. The chest itself has been carved apart and ripped. His, uh, his ribs exposed, some snapped out. His legs are been torn open. She's in the middle of going through his left leg. The right leg looks like it she tried, but couldn't finish. And maybe the left is better. And off to the side next to her on Bella's gorgeous rug with no protection, no cleaning or, or tarp underneath is a pile of bloody and flesh vomit surrounding <clears throat> her and on her dress. And before you, Ava doesn't even notice you walk in is Ava reaching into this corpse and ripping at meat as she is just slowly trying to ingest it. Okay. As shocking as that visual is, Dakota needs to greet the prince and probably actually cares more about that than, you know, the pile of bloody vomit. So she uh, will enter immediately and go to Bella. Um, uh, she'll probably say, my prince. She smiles. Go ahead. Nope, nope. I just say my prince oh, and I just, bow. Oh, yeah. She smiles, but her eyes don't leave Ava's. And she's like, I'm so glad you could make it, my dear. Please oh. take a seat. We haven't had a reading lesson in some time. We have not. You look wonderful tonight, and your company is vast. Friendly. Now, Ava, you now hear some conversation happening. You're lost in the, the misery and pain of having to do this. And when you finally kind of come to yourself and you know, have a moment to gather your senses and you look up, you do see Dakota taking a seat in the chair across from Bella. Bella hands her a book. I know it's been some time, like I said, my dear, but please let's pick up where we left off. Of course. And she gestures for you to keep reading from the Book of Fairy Tales. I, I continue um, and so as, you do. as she wishes, yeah. And you have a proper reading lesson for the entirety of the night. Occasionally interrupted by wretched vomiting, loud noises. But she seems to ignore it. Sometimes she even giggles if it's particularly violent, but she tries to keep it to herself. And she, every time you stumble across a word, she'll, in the middle of the eating and the, the noises, she'll reach over and be like, oh, uh, that's the word together. T together, together. Continue. And that goes on for the rest of the night until your reading lesson is over. Ava, over the course of two nights, you've devoured the flesh, the eyes, the lips, the brain matter which you left for last, all of it, and all of it eventually works its way up. And when she is satisfied with the skeletal remains of bits of muscle, joint tissue all hanging loosely, she then clears the room of the security guards. I want this all clean by tomorrow. And she leaves. And there, while well, we're a little early, we'll pull back. And Zach and Ava will get together next time. Wow. God, that's brutal. I'm really hungry. Anyone else? Nom, 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 nom. Nope. Ava is officially an undead blender. No, she's Ooh. bulking up. She needs the protein, you know? <laughs> Tomorrow's <laughs> leg day, so consume legs, four legs. Yeah, I like won't be eating for the rest of the day. Yeah, <laughs> so we're done. Get an extra point of strength. 
<laughs> well, that wasn't supposed to how the episode was going to go. Wow. I had a whole other thing Matt I wanted to you're used to this with this cutlery by now, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. those first few episodes were real promising, though. Like, <laughs> but because I mean, sometimes, I'm trying to hey, keep my nose no, no, clean. No, 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 no. The dice, the dice sometimes just don't work out in your favor. Today was a wonderful lesson in why I said hunger is going to be so much more important now yep. because it's always going to be a threat. This is why the beast is so dangerous. Yeah. But I'm sorry, Tracy, if that traumatized you. <laughs> I love you very it's okay. much. It's okay. It wasn't you... real. We dipped, we dipped into the dark horror aspects of this my mind. This is the Bye. very dark uh, side of World of Darkness for sure. So... Shout out to everyone uh, at home. Remember, if there's other traumatizing things that you feel, uh, blah, 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 etc., you know, you can just mute or not watch, whatever. Also, I do recommend in home games, you definitely use Lines and Veils and Fading to Black, etc., which if Tracy is going to get traumatized, Lana, you can always <laughs> use that. But I think we're all pretty much understanding this is in the good fun of traumatizing. We don't recommend actually traumatizing Oh, yeah, no, people. no, no, please. Um, yes. The bu bonus side, all my notes for this episode carry over to the next because... None of it happened. Well, great. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> it was great. So, mm. yep. I'm just going to add that to the list of... I got to ride cleaning. on the sheriff's motorcycle. Ah! <laughs> I know you did. And Ava almost rode on about half a dozen guards. <laughs> also <laughs> true. God, I hate the sheriff. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh. I just That's all I could take from that. I hate him. <laughs> he's been so much more of an asshole this time around. Yeah, he really doesn't yeah. like Ava, if yep. it wasn't obvious. Yep. It'll be fun. <sighs> anyway, thank you for watching. A reminder, uh, Karen, thank you for supporting today's episode, making it possible to pay the majority of our cat cost. We have 1.5 cats per person on the show at the moment, so... Oh, yeah a lot of cats to pay for um yep. in addition all the stuff's on the patreon now you should totally check out and of course tomorrow we have episode three of shadows of duskfall shadow of duskfall um lots of shadows at the moment uh and we have eric on because josh is away so uh eric's gonna be amazing i'm so um, excited to get saito back in here <laughs> one day yeah i i i think he's just gonna turn up and be like same as always? Yeah, okay. <laughs> honestly, like, though, honestly, honestly, take me okay. away with you. All right, let's be real. If this mess had happened in season one, you'd all be getting, like, murdered or more touchstones killed because you wouldn't have handled it nearly as well. But for what it was worth, Ava was able to convince another one to keep it to himself until later on that night. E was able to, you know, carry his emergency blood packs on him, was able to use that. You guys did as much as you could possibly do to get it as clean as possible, which is why... This is your punishment. You don't yep. lose power. You don't lose influence. You don't lose your boons. You still have your domain. You just lose your lunch. You just lose. Or your mama. We've already yep. lost that. Or your, we already lost, I mean, you can't lose. I mean, I could kill your dad if I wanted to. But I thought you were gonna. I thought you were gonna open up the body bag and it was gonna be her driver. Oh um, yeah. See, I was like, when when you brought the up and EE e. went like this, I was like, who does he think is in there? Because I it's... thought it was gonna be the driver. I was <laughs> oh, like, oh, yeah, that would have been oh man. Oh, man. man. oh, let's do the stain roll. Stain roll. Um, stain roll. So I you only got stains. one stain. No, you're. I'm only gonna give you the one. Okay. I looked up the rules. Okay. So you just gotta so... roll. How many empty boxes do you have? Uh, is there a button one, for stain two. rolls actually? Uh, yeah, there sheet? is. Um, there okay. is. If you look, ah, where is it? Uh, remorse down the very bottom. If you just check the one stain, then hit remorse <laughs> down the bottom, that'll roll it for you. Okay, I have the one stain checked. So, double humanity tens. pass! Good. What is it about double tens today? <laughs> does, she get, does she get stained for eating a corpse? I thought about it, um, but it was a life or death situation for her if she turned it down. Yeah. I could stain her for it. it it's like feel... she's being traumatized by it, and I think if she wasn't being traumatized, if she was choosing to, that might make sense, but she's like literally being forced to, so... Yeah, it wasn't a choice. She didn't yeah. choose to eat it. <laughs> yeah, I thought uh, for the courier saying I would have buried her for a week. I thought about uh, bricking her up in a wall, but I'm like, what is that going to do? You know, yeah, that's not fun. You make that's her make some sort of roll to thing. not get the organivore floor because organivore torridor oh, would be yeah, the worst. Yeah. That'd be I... hilarious. Oh my god, so many after show things we want to talk about. <laughs>
Yeah. There were things yeah, I want to say, but I'm going to save them. I'm saving them yeah, for the yeah. after show. I'm saving them. I'm yeah, saving them. Oh, it's definitely after show unhuman. stuff to talk about. Uh, Patreon, do the Patreon things, get access to the after shows. Anyway, we're going to go and do that. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. Um, I know it's been mentioned uh, in, like, some mentioned in the YouTube. I just want to point out, they said, uh, in, in the Discord, they said, I recommend putting an extra warning when you post this to YouTube. Uh, no, because we already have an all-purpose warning at the beginning. That's the point of that warning. We don't mean it like, hey, we're making this every episode. Feel free to ignore it. No, the warning is there because this is World of Darkness, and we're trying to play it as true as possible to the law that's why when things come up it's your responsibility to do the mute etc we do warn you at the beginning for a good reason um and you totally have you know feel free to mute or do whatever that's on you and please use those abilities we're not telling you to do that and hoping you would ignore them seriously you can mute and walk away for a cup of tea etc it's fine um okay. anyway we're gonna go do the after shows and stuff thank you very much for watching and uh, we're gonna go through everyone and where you can find them and go through tips very quickly so we'll start off i think because someone had to go through uh an arm and a leg and another arm and another leg and then a torso and a head uh we'll start with uh tracy tracy who are you what do you do when we find you hello everybody you can find me anywhere and everywhere at miss magitech um and that's about it for me <laughs> i'm still <laughs> processing everything oh god <laughs> Woo! can't wait for next week oh man yeah the that's about it for me Okay. Uh, <sighs> what about Dot? Because Dot, you're not here next week, right? No, I think I'm here next week. I think Wait, the whole gang's week? here. Yeah, next week the whole Wait, gang's what? here. Really? It's. Hang on, let me double check. I was told that check. next week's the 26th. Though. Yeah, oh, you did, right. yeah that, is the one, that is the one I'm yeah. out. Sorry, I'm confused. Oh. I'm, I'm, I thought it was a week earlier in the month. Yes, Why, next week is the one I'm out. You're gonna watch. You're gonna get your reading lesson. Then you've got a bunch of books in your uh, in your thing. Yep. So, right? Yeah. Dakota goes yeah. You're just... in with a bunch of other hounds. Like it makes sense. Go to my books. Uh. uh yes. Uh. Wow. Today's game was fun. This was fun. What do you do? Where do we find you and all that jazz? You can you can find me online as Little Red Dot. I play a lot of games. Work for lots of uh, lots of cool networks like this one throughout the week. And uh, yeah, you can also find me in the UK. Thanks to roll for it. The end of the month. Which I'm sure he's going to talk more about. I'm very excited. Um, 29th, I'm jealous. We're doing a meetup. Do do the things. Oh, Reply Patreon, Twitter. There's there's details. There's a Patreon post. It's a Patreon post because it's just that's where we can effectively do like a blog post type thing. Uh, it's not paid or paid all or anything. It's just literally where we posted it. So feel free to go read that on the Patreon. Anyone can come and chill out and hang with everyone, and it'll be a lot of fun. So so many exciting things. Uh, that's and, that's uh, it. That's me. Yeah. Uh, in which case, Mathis, what about you, dude? You can find me everywhere at Mathis Games, uh, Pimp, Chiluminati Podcast. I've got a live show on the 30th. If you go to ChiluminatiPod.com, out in Somerville, one small room, 300 seats. Well, there's not 300 seats now, but only a couple weeks left. So if you want to see me podcasting and doing comedy and talking about the Bridgewater Triangle, that's where you're going to find me, baby. And then, that's like I said, Mathis Games everywhere else. Yeah, it's a Wednesday. Okay. It is a Wednesday. A busy Wednesday. I'm sorry. Yeah, it happens. Uh, and last but not least, the the cleaner that saved Ava from much worse punishments, Mr. E.E. E. Where can we find you? I, looking for more blood bags? <laughs> That's where I'm going to be. Um, yeah. Uh, hi, you can catch me at youtube.com forward slash Andrew Elysium. Just put up a video on EXO, which is in beta right now, uh, which is a Space Fleet command game. Tomorrow I'm going to have my, I'm probably going to post my stream from today uh, about um, starting the aftermath beta. Uh, because I streamed it. Um, the stream is rambling and talking about a lot of game design stuff and also politics, because politics happened while I was streaming. Um, so enjoy if you really want. I don't know. Uh, but uh, yeah, um, there's also streams and stuff. Tuesday, Wednesday, I have uh, Rogue Trader streams. And of course, tomorrow I'll be GMing Blaze in the Dark, which I really enjoy. And I have Eric as one of my players, which is going to scare the crap out of me because he's done a whole load of GMing and playing Blaze in the Dark, so I'm not intimidated at all. He's a great guy as well. So uh, that'll be fun. Anyway, we're going to read out some tips and then we'll be off. There are a couple of tips to read out. Do, 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 um, Okay, Streamlabs, what are you... No, you're trying to do crazy stuff. Okay, that's great. Okay, but... Invalid CSRF token. Okay, Streamlabs. <laughs> Sorry about this, folks. Yes, I would like to authorize. Invalid. Okay, I cannot read out tips today because apparently um, I have an invalid CSRF token. That's annoying. Rip. 
yeah, uh, I'll read out all the tips uh, that happened today, tomorrow, and hopefully it's fixed by then. But it looks like there is a problem with the authentication process currently going from Streamlabs to Twitch. So uh, apologies for that. I'll read them out tomorrow. And uh, thank you very much to everyone who tipped. I noticed a few people did. Um, so thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Right, we're off. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, may the dice roll over in your favor, except if there are lots of zeros on your messy critical ones. God, your messy criticals were insane. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, like, I, all the willpower I spent with them. Anyway, uh, and my mouse is... There we go. Bye! Bye!